and return their program to the heights of its storied past. A Big 12 showdown is next. <sighs> Over 800 former coaches and players, including Tom Osborne, who won three national championships, are at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln today. Tommy Frazier led Coach Osborne one of those national championships. Guys dating back to the 30s, 89 of them All-Americans, three of them, including Eric Crouch, won Heisman trophies. Nebraska's going back to its storied past as it hopes to improve its current state and forget about 2002. Welcome, everybody, to Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Brad Nessler with Bob Greasy. Last year, Nebraska had all kinds of trouble. Seven and seven season, they want to get that taste out of their mouth. But, partner, they're opening up their season unranked for the first time in forever, and they're opening up against a Big 12 opponent that is ranked in Oklahoma State. Well, Oklahoma State is on a roll. Their offense led the way last year. Eight starters return on an offense, and their three superstars return. Rashawn Woods, unquestionably maybe one of the top wide receivers in the nation, led the nation last year with 17 touchdown catches. Josh Field, 15th in the nation, threw 31 touchdown passes, and Tatum Bell had over 1,000 yards rushing. But no question about for Ohio State, if they're going to move up, the defense has to lead the way. Oklahoma State won six of their last seven. They went to a bowl game for the first time since 88, and they won it. And they beat Texas A&M, Oklahoma, and Nebraska in the same year. Nebraska wants some payback, and they want to get rid of a 500 season from last year. Worst season in 41 years. What they've got to do is get back, and they've got new faces, six new faces in the coaching staff, new terminology among the players, and, and, and new places everywhere. And what, who has to lead the way, new leadership, who has to lead the way is Jamal Lord. Lord last year was fourth in the conference in rushing. He was last in the conference in pass efficiency. He needs to be more efficient with his passing. He took the weight of that 7-7 seven and seven season on his shoulders. He's even changed his jersey number. And, oh, by the way, those are the old uniforms. Nebraska, 17-0 in season openers, dating back to a Florida State loss. They haven't lost in the last 18 games against Oklahoma State at home. We'll see what happens here today. John and Terry will be in New York at Times Square Stadium. Then Bob Swan and I will be back in Lincoln. Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, sold out for the 256th consecutive time. A packed house set to watch Oklahoma State and the Cornhuskers. As always, third man in our team is fieldside. Here's Lynn Swan. Swanick. Thank you, Brad. There's a swirling wind that will have an effect on the game, but the greatest change on the game will be the winds of change for Nebraska football. Not since 1962 have they had this many changes. Six coaching changes, two are coordinators. Now this will have a cascading effect over the Nebraska program, changing the roles of coaches. But the most important adjustment will be made by the head coach, Frank Solich. He will no longer call the offensive plays. He will no longer be the person who is in charge having to worry about those details. As a matter of fact, he'll have to figure out just where he wants to stand on the sideline for this game. And he does have a game plan for that. But keep in mind, he wants to do all of this, Brad, and still win football games right now. That's what their object is today, obviously. Back to return, Josh Davis, the single-season return leader for Nebraska. He'll be the starting eye back as well today. As Oklahoma State won the toss, they deferred to the second half, and Cole Farden's got it teed up. Number 24, Oklahoma State, to kick off to Nebraska, and we're underway in Lincoln. Davis has a long run to track it down at the three. Cuts near side, across the corner. Davis out to the 35-yard line. And that's a nice way to start your season. The kicker had to make the stop. A 32-yard kickoff return. Here's the guy that Bob was talking about, Jamal Lord. Passing yardage you see there, 12 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, third most ever by a Division I quarterback in the rushing department, though. And as the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma State has said, Bill Clay, the best running back on the field today is the guy that will take this snap. No question about it. Nebraska would like him to run a little less and throw a little more. As Wally said, the new offensive coordinator, Barney Cotton, what's he got up his sleeve? It's Nebraska football. That's where they're strong. Up front 
on the inside of that offensive line as we take a look at the Outback Steakhouse starting lineups and these guys can put away a blooming onion or two. There's the wide receivers and tight end Harrion is the big threat there. Pilkington and O'Halloran outside Davies and Davis in the backfield. But the big eaters, Richie Incognito is the best up front. Sewell's been a big surprise at center. Anderson, Billy Waldrop and Eric and Erickson round out that front five. Second down and six on Nebraska's opening drive from the 39-yard line. Direct snap. Jamal Love coming outside. Nice move out to midfield. And Oklahoma State territory already at the 49-yard line. Here's the defense that's trying to slow down number five and company. Up front, Greg Richmond's the defensive captain. He's got the most experience. Well, Warren and Co. inside, not a lot of experience. Antonio Smith's the other defensive end. It's a 4-2-5 alignment. The two linebackers, Padgett McGee and Lawrence Pinson, and then the deep five, and you can actually count Fata Carter as a strong safety outside linebacker type in the 4-2-5 alignment of Oklahoma State. You can drop that 4-2-5 into a 4-4 real easily against this run. Here's a pitch to Davis. Trying to get the corner, got a pretty nice block, and got down near the 42-yard line. We'll give him seven. Robert Jones ran him out of bounds. Josh Davis, a second-generation tailback at Nebraska. His daddy played in the mid-'70s. And when he got the starting assignment over David Horn, he called his dad. Somebody said, what'd your dad Tony say? He says he was sort of at a loss for words. <laughs> and Solich said he didn't, he's not starting because he's a fifth-year senior or his dad played here. He's playing because he worked his rear end off and he deserves the start. Second and four. Here's the option. And the pitch to Davis. Cuts inside. He's got a first down and more. Down to the 31-yard line. A pickup of 11 for the young guy we're just talking about, Josh Davis. And Nebraska goes to the option in the first series. You've seen some stuff. Everybody wanted to know what Barney Hop Cotton was going to do. You've seen uh, Lord in the shotgun. Now you see a little option. If that block gets made there, possibly he could have gone the whole way. Barney Cotton, the new offensive coordinator, was a star lineman in the 70s here, and he still looks like he could play. Davis cuts up inside down to the 27-yard line. Get into the game with Enhanced TV. Play along, get up to the minute stats, vote in the polls. Enhanced TV is live now at ESPN.com. Opening drive, only two minutes so far, and already five straight runs have put Nebraska down to the 27-yard line. No passes yet. <laughs> Doesn't look like anything different for Nebraska. Doesn't look like it to me either. <laughs> the option to the left side, and Lord will keep it, and he didn't get much. Only about a yard. Nice closing job by Padgett McGee, one of those two inside linebackers, number 41. McGee will play a lot today and gets the start, but actually Paul Duran was the leading tackler for this team a year ago. Yeah, and he's, and he's starting in place of Duran, but we'll see a lot of Duran also. This defense, I mentioned uh, in the opening, has to play a lot better than they did last year. They were 80th in the country last year out of 117 Division I teams. Not very good, and they were 100th against the pass. We might see our first pass. It's third down and six, and... Jamal Lord's trying to call a timeout and finally gets the umpire's attention and we'll take a timeout with him. Almost three minutes into the game, good looking opening drive, but now a key third down for Nebraska when we come back. All right, we're back. The reason Jamal Lord called the timeout, there's six there, three is nine, one is 10, and two out here is 12. You know he's supposed to play with 11. Jamal <laughs> saw it and called timeout. Wisely called timeout. He's got three wideouts here in Pilkington, LaFleur, and Liley. Don't forget about the tight end, Harrion. Third down and six. And it's a quarterback draw. Jamal Lord, first down and more. Down inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. I like the call. Barney Cotton is calling the plays. Spread them out. Passing situation. If you're expecting pass, run the quarterback option. Drops back. Let's the defense settle down. The red shirts get down there. Get in front of a white shirt. Jamal's a big kid. He's 6'2", 220 pounds. And he's got a long stride, as you can see. And he got 14 yards down to the 13-yard line. 
eighth play of the Husker drive. Inside, Josh Davis got popped. <laughs> he got, got popped. across the 10, boy. Did he get popped? John Holland laid the wood to him. Oklahoma State try to fire up that defense and try to prevent Nebraska from taking it the length of the field for an opening score. Remember, Davis got him out to the 35 with a kick return. Now with that run inside, he's touched the eight-yard line for him. Second down there, they can get a first down inside the Oklahoma State three-yard line. High backfield. First guy through is going to be Judd Davies, and he got nothing for fullback. And that will bring up third down. Hinson, the linebacker, one of the first to meet him. Nebraska was fourth in the country last year in rushing again. They've led the country 15 times, 269 yards a game. 15 rushing titles, seven of the last 11 years. So they know how to run the football. Yeah, that's for sure. They were fourth last year, led the nation the two previous years. Third down, a big third down and four. Lord on the option. He'll keep it. Late pitch, and he threw it out of bounds. Tried to get his trailer, but his trailer wasn't there anymore by that time. Paget McGee is the guy that separated Jamal Lord from the football. And now Nebraska is going to have to settle for a field goal attempt. Well, Jamal strings it out. The defense really plays it well. There's nothing there. He says, well, if I if, let me take a shot at it, and if he doesn't catch it, we're so close to the out of bounds. It's out of bounds anyway. That was a that was a good choice by Jamal. Of course, Nebraska had a very efficient kicker in Brown a year ago. This is Sandro DeAngelis to try to open up the scoring with a 28 yard field goal attempt from the left hash. DeAngelis kick on the way and it's good. Tucked it inside the left upright. So the opening march for Nebraska almost five minutes long. It stalled on a third down. They had to settle for three. Cornhuskers in front. So Nebraska took the opening kickoff, traveled 54 yards in 11 plays, all runs. They had to settle for a field goal of 28 yards. Marley Cotton, I told you, he looks like he could still play. He's got his lineman and some of the other guys around him. Look at the size of this guy. <laughs> he, looks, he looks like one of those guys in those Western movies. Well, he's 6'5 to start with. He had cowboy boots on yesterday in our meeting. Oh, he looked like he was 7-1. Here's a kick to the three-yard line. Morency bringing it out. Morency broke a tackle, cuts outside. Nice return. Still on his feet across the 35. Morency down the sideline. And much like Nebraska, only in even finer fashion, Hernan Morency goes 45 yards on the kick return. Showed some patience on the sideline, waited for his blockers to get back, and then got about 15, 20 more yards. Starts up the center, and he knows all along that the return is set up to our right side. Now, right here, he's out of gas. He doesn't know it, but he waits for some white shirts to come back, and about four or five of them come back, and he gets another 15, 20 yards. And on top of it, the kicker, Endor, for Nebraska, got tangled up trying to make the tackle, and he's shaken up as you take a look on the right side of the screen. There's Endor. Oh, boy. They helped him up on the sideline, but that didn't look too good. At the 48-yard line, great place to start for Oklahoma State in their high-powered offense. Nebraska jumped into the neutral zone. Here's a free play for Tatum Bell. Oh, and they blew the whistle, and Tatum Bell is saying, I had the house there. Uh -huh. I think that was Bingham, 59, that jumped. Steve Uzicek, the referee with the call. Encroachment on a defense. Contact, five-yard penalty. So immediately before the first official snap now, Oklahoma State and their quarterback Josh Fields will be in Nebraska territory. There's the numbers for Josh last year. 31 Sensational. And, yeah, 31 and 10. Mike Gundy says he's smart, he's savvy, and he says he just he, he, he can't rattle him. He just he's really a calm football player. He's got a great place to start here at the 47-yard line. Bell is the single setback, and he will get it on the counter, and he's swarmed under by Trevor Johnson. 
as he got to the 46-yard line. Let's take a look at the Outback Steakhouse starting lineups. And here's the big fellas up front for Oklahoma State. Hardison used to be a tight end. This is his first game at tackle. Aiken, Bowie, Mays, and Davis across the front wall. They're pretty good from guard to guard. The tackles are untested. Bell, over 1,000 yards last year. Burrow's the fullback. Majima's a good tight end. And the Woods brothers, including Rashawn, who Bob talked about with 107 catches last year, lead the passing attack. He just might be the best in the country. We watch him here today. They flare it out. Bell dropped the ball. Was that a lateral? Nope. They're going to say incomplete. I tell you what, they played it to the end, though. Both Nebraska and Woods were thinking that, and they covered the football wisely. It's incomplete. The line judge right there was on the call. That's his call. To see any, any throw to the sideline, whether it goes forward or backwards, and make the call. That was darn close. At the 46, it'll be third down and four. Under nine and a half minutes, first quarter. Brad Nestler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew in Lincoln, Nebraska. On a perfect late August day, just over 70 degrees, 3 nothing Cornhuskers at home. Fields, quick drop, quick slant. Completion could be a touchdown. Woods dragged down inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. He needed another half step on Pat Ricketts, and he would have been gone. One of the changes for Nebraska this year, Bo Pelini, the coordinator, was telling us yesterday, is more defense, more zones in the defense. Right here, he's going to run a slant. Everybody is dropping back in their zone coverages. And he just hit that little slant and just took that was uh, that was too easy for the first completion of the year for Rashawn Woods on a third and four. They get 28 yards first down and they're in the Nebraska red zone at the 18 yard line. Fields looks like he's changing things up with Bell behind him. It'll be Bell trying to cut back in a nice open field stop by Demorio Williams a rangy linebacker for Nebraska one of two rangy linebackers as we take a look at the black shirt defense up front Trevor Johnson's the captain there Bernard Thomas a red shirt last year Bingham and Lakeven Smith are inside the linebackers Rude led the team in tackles last year Williams and Hollowell shared time at the same spot last year they both moved to the outside the secondary Fabian Washington probably the best cover man Bullocks Bland and Ricketts round out the crew back there Second down and nine, Oklahoma State trying to drive to even it or take the lead. Fields in the flat, down to the 15 to his tight end, Bajima, but nice coverage there by the new defense of Nebraska led by that gentleman, Bo Pelini. He went to Michigan, uh, went to Ohio State. Like, unlike a lot of the new assistants that Frank Solich hired, a lot of those guys were Nebraska backgrounds. Bellini is from Ohio State, was in the NFL for nine years, most recently just came from the Green Bay Packers. Bo was a captain in the secondary in his Ohio State days under both Earl Bruce and John Cooper. And now he's asking his defense to stop a third down and seven. Four wide out group and fields from the gun. Nobody in the backfield. Josh to throw the quick slant. Boy, what a shot the mouthpiece came out of Gabe Lindsay, but he held on to it. I think he's a little bit short of the first down. Yeah, good call, partner. You got sharp eyes. He was an orange mouthpiece. If it would have been green, I wouldn't have had a shot. <laughs> if it would have been the ball, I'd been a first down. He took a wallop. Uh. And they mark it just inside the eight yard line. And it is a first down. The first down. First and goal. Nebraska leading Oklahoma State threatening. Extra tight end in there. The toss sweep to Bell. Tries to follow his blockers and got to the five. Maybe down to the four. Good drive. A nice mix of run and pass. Mike Gundy, the offensive coordinator, has all these weapons, as you mentioned when you introduced the offensive line. The inside guys are the strength. The outside, the two tackles are the ones that have a little bit of, they're, they're the new guys. The two tackles are the new guys. Mike's the guy way down on the left-hand side. Far end. Far end. There's Les Miles, the head coach, in his third year. He's never won an opener, but he's put a lot of pop back in this Oklahoma State football program after that 8-5 year last season. Second down and goal, just inside the five. Fields. 
to the far corner, too far in front of Rashawn Woods. Nice coverage by Ricketts. Ricketts has been staying with Woods pretty well. And he had all the action, all the line, all the uh, backs were moving around over on the right side. They had a little bunch over there on the right side. But they had their man, Rashawn Woods, over there on the left, and that's where he was going. Ricketts did a nice job. Josh Fields, we mentioned, Bob said 31 touchdown passes last year. More than half of his touchdown passes, 16 of them, were in the red zone. And Rashawn Woods, of his 17 touchdown catches, nine of them were in the red zone. I'm not trying to set you up for a fade. I'm just saying there he is. <laughs> Third down and goal. Fields. Woods, touchdown. Well, you didn't get the fade. You got to stop and stop and come back. Good call, partner. So there's the first one for Woods for the year, and Oklahoma State takes the lead. A very impressive drive for the Cowboys. Nebraska goes down and kicks the field goal. The Cowboys come right back and put seven on the board. Boy, and that quieted the sellout crowd. Luke Phillips will come in to try to tack on the point after. And the extra point is up and good. So just like that, Oklahoma State, like Nebraska, got a great kick return, and then Josh Fields went to work. He's got his first touchdown of the year. Oklahoma State's got its first lead of the year. Here's a touchdown. Let's go back and take a look. Rashawn Woods, watch him now. He just got to get in the end zone and bang right into Ricketts. Knocks him off the line, and the ball is there. Now, he had help to the inside, so he was favoring the outside, but you can't stop that. The timing on that route was just perfect. Hard as this kick is out of the end zone, and Nebraska will have to bring it out to the 20. So 7-3, Oklahoma State leads in front of this Nebraska sellout crowd in ABC Sports presentation of college football. Brought to you by the newly redesigned 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix. Fuel for the soul. SBC, ordinary people, extraordinary job. And Suzuki, maker of innovative vehicles, motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. So now not as good a field position for Nebraska on their second march to work from the 20-yard line. And a handoff to Davis. Josh got almost five on near the 25. Lawrence Pinson took him off his pins. Bring second down and about six. This defense for Oklahoma State had six starters returning. The strength of this uh, strength of the defense are the defensive ends and linebackers. They lost uh, Kevin Williams, a number one draft choice in the NFL, out of that defensive tackle spot. They've had a little bit of trouble filling those uh, two spots inside. They lost both the defensive tackles. Second and a long five on the option. Lord looking for a place to hide, trying to reverse his field. He needs a block, and oh, man, what an open field shot by Darren Williams. He's hurt, but he dropped Lord way back at the 15-yard line. Yeah, he's, uh, he's their best defensive back, uh, Williams. Guy that had eight tackles against Nebraska in the upset win last year. Yeah, this is a mental mistake for Lord. You don't do this. You just go forward right there. You don't go around this way unless you can make it. Ooh, what Which, a shot. I think, he, I think he just dinged himself in the head. I do, too. Getting patted on the back by his teammates, but the helmet's off, and he's trying to do a sit-up and uh, can't quite get there. Stop it right here. Here's the guy that's going to make the play as Lord comes back. Watch the guy at the top of the screen. That's Williams. He came 20 yards like a bullet. Yeah. And coming off a little woozy right now. Yep. He's 5'9 and 175 pounds. He's got five career interceptions, and, and three of them he's returned for touchdowns. He's, he's wobbly right now. I don't think he knows where he is. Nope. He's thinking he's in Stillwater. Yeah. And he knows he knows he's got a concussion coming on, and he's he's upset that he's not going to be able to play. He did force a third down and 15, though. Lord 
Finally set to throw. Deep out to Harry and had his hands on it, but got broken up by Vernon Grant, who just came in for Darren Williams. So a nice play by Grant right off the bench. And a tough throw for Jamal Lord for his first throw of the season. Harry, number 11, the tight end. To go upfield and then break to the outside. He's in right now. If the ball were there now, it's a completion, but it was, the timing of the route was just such that the defensive back got there and broke it up. Kyle Larson, one of the better punters in the country, but he's going to be standing at his own goal line. And Gabe Lindsay will be back deep for Oklahoma State. Bad snap wide to the right, but it's handled well, and oh boy, he got a piece of this one. Way back at the 41, Lindsay takes it on the fly. And he got about three and a half yards on the return. That's gonna, it's going to be another good field position for the Cowboys. First drive started in Nebraska territory after a penalty. And here's the snap that goes wide. And I got to tell you, did a yeah. nice job, Kyle Larson did, to field that thing right by the goal line and then got off a beauty of a kick. Well, you don't. When you see a snap that poorly and the punter have to go that way outside of his body frame to pick it up and kick it. You don't see many of these those get off. Kyle's a third year starter showed his savvy on that one. But still as Bob said Oklahoma State's going to start at the 45 yard line. So the field position battle so far today has gone to Oklahoma State in this first quarter. A quarter that is almost 10 minutes old at 7 3 Cowboys. Fields and Woods have the touchdown for Oklahoma State. Straight up the middle, Tatum goes to midfield and maybe shades it on Nebraska's side. We'll give him five. Our college football triple header wraps up tonight. You'll see the defending national champion Buckeyes of Ohio State against Washington in the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT or Florida State, North Carolina. That's all tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Uh, second down and five. Just shaded on the Nebraska side of the midfield stripe. And Fields now is going to take a timeout. And while we've got a timeout, we've got time to go to John in New York. Right for the Taco Bell update. Alabama and South Florida. Brian Fisher takes this one and breaks a couple of tackles and then rubs it in prancing into the end zone as South Florida grabs a lead now 14 to 7 over Alabama and their new coach Shula back to you. Oh that's not the way Mike Shula wants to start a ball game down a touchdown to South Florida. And we've got 428 remaining in the quarter. Let's check in with Swanick. Well, Brad Grant Williams went over to the sideline. Head athletic trainer Terry Noonan checked him out along with a couple of the doctors, and he said his neck's a little sore, but they anticipate that he will return back to his aggressive defensive duty <laughs> on the next possession. All That's right. good news. That is. Because that hit fired up that whole defense, and had he been able to pop right back up, they would have been really swarming around each other. As it is, he's back in the defensive huddle there, so it looks like he will be coming back, as Swanee said. Meanwhile, the offense of Oklahoma State has a second down and five following the timeout. Three wide outs for Fields. But he keeps it on the ground to Bell and Tatum Bell. We said that the strength of Oklahoma State's offensive line was from guard to guard, and, and they're running it up the middle right now. They are. They are, and uh, I expect them to continue doing that. Five carries for 16 yards for Tatum Bell, who went over 1,000 yards last season. He's a little bit heftier than he was last year, put on some muscle. He's about 213 now, as there were his numbers from a year ago, over six yards a carry. First down, Oklahoma State at the Nebraska 44, leading 7 to 3. Play action. Fields deep middle. Badgema is intended receiver, the tight end, and he just missed him. 404 left first quarter here. Let's check in at Times Square Stadium in New York. Here's John. Tennessee against Fresno State. Jabari Davis, you want to see a great run, takes the handoff about five yards deep in the backfield, and then just quickness and speed and power out of one tackle will not be caught. 44 yards for the touchdown as Tennessee now leads Fresno State 14 nothing. Brad. So they're rocky topping already in Knoxville. Here's 7 3. The crowd has been quieted by the Oklahoma State offense. Second and 10. 
Fields from the gun, but the draw plays inside to Bell again. Tatum Bell just weaving his way inside the 40 down to the 39. Barrett Rude made the tackle. Rude, the middle linebacker, number two tackler last year with 91 stops despite some injuries at times. His dad played here as well. Tom played in the 70s and his great granddaddy, yes, Clarence sir. Swanson, played back here in the yes, sir. 18, 1918 to 1921. So he's a third generation Husky. He's a homeboy right here in Lincoln. There's yes, a, no doubt where he was going to school. Third down, five high snap on the shotgun. Fields takes it on one hop like the third baseman he is and finds a receiver. First down, Oklahoma State. Got it to Lindsey. Penalty markers down. At the line of scrimmage. What a great play by Fields. The presence of mind, you told, I said earlier that he doesn't get rattled, and he didn't. The ball went over his head. Of course, when something like that happens, the illegal receiver downfield. One of the linemen just goes downfield. Josh Fields, a all Good. Big 12 third baseman for Good. the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Good fielder. <laughs> yeah, he is. Watch this at the third base side. Whoop, they're right there, and watch the throw. There's the arm. And it's draft time for him. He's a pretty good hitter, too. He'll be a junior this year, and that's when they draft the baseball players. So he might have a decision to make. Obviously, Les Miles hopes he sticks around and plays another year of quarterback. He's already halfway to Mike Gundy's all-time career passing marks after the sensational year last season. He's got a third down. There's what he did on third down last year. Third and ten. Blitz. Throwing deep. Oh, he just overshot Rashawn Woods, who probably would have scored had he kept it within his reach. If he could have waited and held the ball just a second longer to allow Rashawn to get up, but he had to throw it right there. He had to get rid of the football. That third base didn't sound so bad. You take a few of those babies <laughs> to the head. Bo Pelini, the defensive coordinator, putting pressure. May have saved a touchdown there. So Oklahoma State squandered some good field position as well. Remember, they had it at their own 45 to start the drive. They got inside Nebraska's 45, and now they have to kick. Cole Farden would like to drop this one down inside the 10-yard line somewhere, and he hit it a mile in the air. And it's taken. Davis didn't call for a fair catch, so he fields it and gets across the 10 to the 11-yard line. And it's no halo rule anymore. That's one of the changes in rules this year in college football. So they don't have to give him six feet before they hit him. Josh didn't call a timeout. He did make the catch, though, and got about two yards out to the 11. Nonetheless, not a great spot for Nebraska's offense to start. Tomorrow, join ABC Sports in Boston. It's third-round action at the inaugural Deutsche Bank Championship, live at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. And then Monday, don't miss the final round coverage at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, right here on ABC Sports. Almost forget it's Labor Day weekend. Yeah, they're it's playing, we're working, they're playing on Monday. Yeah. The final that goes on Monday. Here's a handoff. David Horn who's checked in for the first time. The plan was Josh Davis to start at back. He'd play a couple series, and then David Horn, who had a sensational freshman season last year, would probably come in and play the next two series and then maybe go with a hot hand. I don't know. But that was a battle, as Bob said earlier, in uh, training camp in two days to see who was going to be the starting back, and it really wasn't announced uh, until about a week ago. Well, all these guys not only are backs, but they, they handle the kickoff and a lot of the punt return chores. So when you get that much activity, you're going to need two or three eye backs throughout a ball game. So Horn sets up inside his own five yard line as Nebraska's offense is second and nine. Here's Lord rolling to throw and completes it. Nice toss and it's a first down out to the 22 yard line. Ross Pilkington and there's Jamal Lord's first completion. Nebraska has to start throwing the football to loosen up Oklahoma State defensively. We get another look. Just need one foot and possession. Yeah, he looked pretty good. No question. Actually got two in. Good catch. Great throw. First down outside the 22. There's Frank Solich with hands on knees. There's a couple of the backup quarterbacks who are sending plays in by hand signals this year. That's something that hasn't been done here since ever. <laughs> That's right. Bob Devaney, Tom Osborne, Frank Solich all sent plays in with substitutions. And this pass is incomplete, intended out in the flat for Horn. So he didn't move his feet that time. He, he set up, 
down the line, do the option, look downfield, and then it wasn't there, and then he wanted to hit his outlet, but he didn't move his feet and shoulders to throw to the outlet. There's 117 teams in Division 1A. I think that says it all for you right there. You don't want to be 112th. There's Jamal's mom and dad. Here from the New Jersey area. They've got a freshman quarterback from up that way, too. They're yep. pretty high on in Joe Daly. Yep. Two of their three quarterbacks are from New Jersey. Maybe the best player they ever got out of that part of the country. We spent some time this with, with this weekend. Heisman Trophy winner Mike Rozier. So they do pretty well up there. Yeah. Here's a snap. They fake the handoff inside. Jamal Orr does it on his own. And he's going to have a first down. That's what he does as yes. good as anybody in the country. There's no doubt that's what he does best. We were talking to Barney Cotton, and he said, you know, what are we going to do? Take a look at the Jamal. He said, what are we going to do? He said, you can't put a square peg in a round hole. we got to do what Jamal does best, and that is run. But they still want to get him throwing the short passes. They want to get him throwing on early downs and not just on passing situations. There's the numbers on Jamal so far. Six rushes, 24 yards. Last year, over 1,400 yards rushing. on the ground, rushing. He threw for more yardage than he passed for. Ran for ran more for yardage more. than Excuse he passed yeah, for. Ran. He's going to try to pass for this one. He yeah. got it to Harriet, but he kind of floated it out there. And Jamal took a pop after he let go of the ball. He yeah. did complete it. <laughs> they, were, they were hurting on both ends. The red shirts were. The Lord was hurting, and so was uh, Harriet. Tried a little throwback uh, tight end naked screen, and they both took a big shot. We're down to a minute 45 in the first. The Nebraska faithful, I, you look around, these great fans they have here, the folks in Nebraska who love their football, and they have talked about nothing but Nebraska football since the 7-7 seven seven season ended last year. Oh, boy. But the anticipation, you could cut it with a knife coming in this place today. Lord, quarterback draw again. Nice cut to the outside. Jamal's got the first, trying to get to the corner. Stiff arms his way, might have gotten a face mask as he's taken out of bounds at the 47-yard line. 16-yard gallop. It's either going to be a holding on the wide receiver, Burkle, trying to block for him, or it's going to be a face mask against Oklahoma State. Let's wait and see. It's a holding call. On the offense. The freshman, the true freshman out there trying to block for him, and I thought he got his hand in the cookie jar. Yeah, Burkle. He was holding. Yeah. You're going to watch it here, and right Can there it is. He's got his jersey. Yep. Right there. Trying to give Jamal the corner. You could see it coming from a mile away. He never really had the angle on Williams to get a piece of him from the front, and so that negates a good part of that game. Frank Solich pleading his case over there. Frank in his That's sixth year looking for his 50th win as Nebraska's head coach. And against ranked opponents, it's been a tough go, and this is a number 24 Oklahoma State team. The first four years he was in control, they had great records, and they were in a national championship game. Right. Last year was the only bad year of the first five. Hand off straight up the middle. Davies the fullback, and he is met in the hole as he got near the 45-yard line. Dream Smith said hello, and it is going to be third down and less than a yard, it appears. Oklahoma State's defense tightening up a little bit on this drive. So third down, less than one. Final 45 seconds, first quarter. Oklahoma State leading Nebraska in Lincoln, 7-3. to three. There's the total yardage for the Huskers, less than 100 here in the first quarter. Lord, quarterback sneak. Boy, he had to work for it. He got the first down, though. He just kept his feet moving and just kept following that right side behind Jake Anderson. And he's got the first down. Actually, Brandon Cole was the right guard in that play, number 75, and that's where he's going to go behind Sewell as center. And Cole is right guard and just kept his feet moving, and his second effort got him the first down. The Oklahoma State defensively is not giving an inch. Bill Clay, their defensive coordinator, doing well. There's a look at Sewell, Sewell the center. He, he's from Lincoln. He went to Indiana State for a couple of years. He decided, I didn't want to do that, so he came back here. And walked, walked on. Walked on the program, and now he's the starting center. Snaps it to Jamal, and Lord. 
On the left side, not a lot of help out there. And he's bulldogged down for a loss on the play. McGee and Fata Carter are the guys that got out there to get it. And that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. So a hard-hitting start here in Nebraska. And Nebraska took the lead, but Oklahoma State answered with a touchdown to take the lead. Our presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. Back in Lincoln, Nebraska, sold out crowd at Memorial Stadium. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan along with you. Another it's 7 to 3, Oklahoma another State. Another sellout, huh? 256 in a row is all. Okay, settle up, Dee. The place to be in the state of Nebraska and the college football center. And as I've said before, these are the best fans in college football. I agree with you. No question about it. They're even polite to the opposition. Yep. Right now, the opposition's leading 7 to 3. Second down at 13 for Lord. Rolls and then drops to throw. Fires Pilkington in and out of his hands, and it's intercepted. Nope, out of bounds. Yeah, it is. Oh, it is intercepted. Yes. Holland got it. I thought they were going to take it away over there, but it's Holland with the interception. Albert Craig is the guy that tipped it. Craig is the one responsible for the interception because he knocked it up in the air. And Holland had the speed to get there. Holland, a junior out of Oklahoma City. Here's another look. It's going to roll to our left side, faking the run. Now look at Holland down at the bottom of the screen. All right here's Holland. Now watch the ball as it gets tipped. Holland's going to get there and get one foot in bounds. First turnover of the game. So it gives it back to the Cowboy offense at their own 33-yard line. The toss to Tatum Bell. Bell trying to follow his tackle out there and does pretty well. Flags are down, though. Let's see if we have a holding call out in that pile. Titus Adams stretched it out to help on the tackle. And it's going to be a holding call against Oklahoma State. And with the holding call, the penalty, we've got time to check in at Times Square Stadium in New York. Here's John. Western Michigan against Michigan State. Jeff Smoker, we know about his problems last year when he had substance abuse problems. But now back as a starter for the Spartans. He goes 50 yards to Ajim Shabai. The Broncos, though, have come back to tie this game seven apiece almost to the second quarter. Here's 7-3, Oklahoma State. 14-40 remaining till halftime. Fields to Woods was the touchdown for the Cowboys. They've had three penalties in the ball game. All have been on the offense. First down at 17 now after that holding call. Bell. Boy, he's got wide open spaces on that backside. Almost got to the first down marker before Fabian Washington knocked him out of bounds. So Bell with a big gain after the penalty. And he made up all the way to the 41 yard line. Oklahoma State after Nebraska had taken a three to nothing lead scored the touchdown in this one and they put up a lot of touchdowns last year. They averaged over 34 points of all game. Yeah, that's the best. Second highest scoring in OSU history. Mike Gundy their offensive coordinator who was the quarterback of the previous best. Mike looking down. Let's see what he's called this time. He's called. The bell to ring again across midfield. Tatum Bell, first down and a bunch more. Bland made the tackle, but a pickup of 11. And Tatum Bell, who really his season got in gear last year in the Nebraska game. He had over 180 yards rushing, and he's starting to get warmed up here. I really like what I see outside. Tatum, uh, not Tatum, Tatum Bell is getting the benefit of the blocking of Rashawn Woods. Rashawn may be one of the best in the country receiving out there doing his job blocking for his uh, running back. So, Bell, there's the numbers so far today. Last year, 33 carries, a career-high 182 against Nebraska. A good start today. Play action, bootleg, Badgema on the completion from Fields, and he's rumbling down the sideline. And has it down to the 31-yard line. So, Oklahoma State mixing it up. They go run, run, then play action, the throw to the tight end, good for 17. I like the play calling. Mike Gundy upstairs just moving the ball around. Here's Badgema right here. They're going to fake this way and come out. Badgema goes sneak to the outside. 
That's just pitch and catch there. Oh, right there. Get him outside the pocket. The tight end. The receiver goes down. I love the play calling. Keep the uh, defense off balance. Rashawn Woods to the near side. DeWan Woods, his little brother, to the top of your screen is Mike Gundy looking on, the offensive coordinator. He's a pretty good quarterback in his day. Almost 8,000 career passing yards, as you just saw. Of course, he had a lot of help. Yeah, too. yeah, he had some pretty good people playing. You know, when with you them. talk about football players at, Ohio, at, at Oklahoma State, who do you think of? It's hard to think of anybody, but he had. Barry Sanders, and he also had Thurman Munson. Thurman Thomas. Thurman Thomas. And Hartley Dykes and Hartley was his Dykes. wide receiver. Yes. Yes. So that was a team that put up a ton of points. The only problem is they gave up two tons of points. There's the numbers in the single season. Here's the flare out, out of the backfield, down to the 26-yard line. Tommy Devereaux. Devereaux is a guy that's going to see a lot of action. He was an option quarterback in high school. And has come on here and as a true freshman wide receiver, he's opened some eyes. They really like this kid. Yeah, they like this kid. They think he's got a lot of speed. Their first game of the year on the road, they're getting him into the mix. They lost uh, two wide receivers last year, John Lewis and T.D. Bryant, that caught a lot of balls opposite Deshaun Woods, and they're trying to develop somebody on the other side. Nebraska had one too many guys out there, and now they might have one too few. They've taken a timeout. They had Demorial Williams trying to sprint off the field. He thinking that he was the 12th man. He might not have been. We'll straighten it all out and be right back to Lincoln. Bob, earlier, Nebraska had to call a timeout with too many guys on the field on offense. There's 12, and there's number 11. Now watch, they're both going off the field. That would have been 10. Yeah. That doesn't work. Fields, play action, a throwback, and in and out of the hands of Sean Willis, his fullback. And Willis might have had a first down, and Fields took a hit again. So twice now, Nebraska's had problems, and again, a lot of changes in terminology on both sides of well, the football. Once on offense, once on defense. There's a little, the long snapper. Dressen has never snapped the football <laughs> in a college football game. This is first time. So let's see if he gets it to the holder, and let's see if Oklahoma State can tack on a 43-yard Luke Phillips field goal. Jacob Dressen with a snap. Perfect. The kick is blocked, though. And Nebraska's defense has done its job. The kicking game can turn around the momentum quicker than anything else, and Nebraska needed one. There was nothing wrong with the snap. The kick may have been low. Let's take another look. Came from the inside, the, the kick was just so low. Yeah, the kick was low. I think it was Adam Carricker who got a hand or even a head on it, I don't know. And also look at the push of the defensive line, guys. The defensive line pushes the offensive line back. It gives him a better angle to blocking that ball. No doubt about that, Swanee. Big Cabongo, number 94 in the middle of that, may have got a hand on it. Cabingo Cabongo on the ball, and it yeah. turns it over to Nebraska's offense at the 41. And Horn will go out for about five. And we'll go to New York on Sunders, John. After a couple down years, Joe Paul got it going again last year, and Penn State has bright hopes this season facing Temple. Zach Mills will hook up 56 yards with Tony Johnson, who could not be more wide open, who just dances to the end zone. And the Nittany Lions with a 7-0 lead. And we'll see those Nittany Lions in here two weeks from today for a night game in Lincoln. And here's Horn, who gets out to midfield, close to a first down, about a yard short. John Holland made the tackle. So 11.38 remaining in the half. Oklahoma State leading 7-3. We've got a break here to ask you the Aflac trivia question. Since 2000, which is the only top 25 Big 12 team Nebraska has defeated. So in the past couple of years, only top 25 Big 12 team Nebraska has beaten. I'll give you the answer a little bit later. Third down and a yard. And might be another timeout coming here. And there is with 11-15 remaining in the half. Penalty markers down as well.
11-15 remaining in the first half. Brad Nesta, Bob Greasy back with you. 7-3 Oklahoma State. This isn't what the Nebraska fans were looking for. Well, a couple of times, uh, Nebraska on offense had too many guys. Nebraska on defense didn't know how many guys were on the You're gonna, That's going to happen. New coaching staff, no matter how many times you practice, these, this is live, live bullets, and this is, you know, when, when you're going to tell. They knew that that would happen at times today. They just didn't want to happen in inopportune times. So there have been some timeouts, some stoppages of play. Here they've got a third down that they'd like to pick up. Six yards to go just inside their own 45. Lord fires it down the middle, completes it. And it's a first down to Harrion. And they're in Oklahoma State territory. That's what they need to do more of is quarterbacks throwing to your tight ends right over the middle, going to your backs and tight ends. If you can hit your backs and tight ends, you can throw for a high percentage and you can move the team down the field. Harriet changed his number to 11 for this year. I don't know why for a tight end. He's up to about 235 pounds, but there's his average yeah. catch. Seven catches, four touchdowns. Seven catches last year, four for touchdowns. That one for a first down at the 47-yard line. Now back to the ground they go, and Horn trying to break a tackle, but hanging on for dear life hey, is Paul Duran, the middle linebacker who made the stop. Duran, as we said, was the guy last year as a redshirt freshman who led this team in tackles and didn't start this ball game. Padgett McGee did. Paul missed uh, a meeting and a practice, kind of had a I had an AWOL situation for Oklahoma State for about a day, so he got demoted yeah. for this game. Second down, a long eight coming up. Lord hesitates, come back to his number two receiver, Pilkington. And Pilkington with a completion and the catch down to the 41 yard line. Barney Cotton, the offensive coordinator, calling the plays. Stunts is the quarterback on the left. So there's going to be two guys calling. I think that's Daly on the right side. I don't think. Uh, <laughs> I don't think Barney's not even telling uh, Daly what the play is. I think it's all stunts. <laughs> they were supposed to both be given dummy, one dummy, one live. But uh, Barney's only talking to uh, stunts. Yeah, Daly's still looking at his wristband, yeah. going, "What did he just call?" Daly's looking over, trying to hear something. <laughs> And Frank Solich is staying away from the action right yeah, now. Yeah. Third down and four. Jamal Lord pumps and then takes off. Stiff arm and inside the 30, down to the 26. First down, Nebraska. Another 15-yard run for Jamal. He does his best running on third down. This is not, this is not a quarterback draw. There was a there was a fox in the hen house there. The <laughs> linebacker just got inside Smith. He just took off third time on third down that he's taken off on the run and picked up a first down and this one's down to the 26 yard line. Nine minutes and change remaining first half Nebraska trying to get down and get more points. They trail by four straight up the middle is horn number nine carries number nine tackles Barrett Williams who was shaken up earlier with that big hit on Jamal Lord back in there and he made the stop from his cornerback position. It was good blocking by the offensive line and the fullback Davies. Nebraska needs to get more people involved instead of Jamal. They need to get the eye backs running like they used to run. They need the receivers to catch more passes. Spread it around a little bit. Liley's the motion man on second down and four. But it's the fullback, Davies, up the middle. Hey, hey, hey. He got close. He's about a yard short. Greg Richmond made the stop. It's going to take, it's going to take Nebraska a little time, Brad, both on offense and defense, to catch up. And what I mean by that is they've got new terminology. A whole new numbering on, system, on everything. Offense. The offensive numbering system, if you can imagine this, if the, they went one through nine, starting way out to the right side. If you want to run a sweep to the right, that was one. It was like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that was a numbering system. That's reading backwards oh, to me. That that is archaic. <laughs> that goes back to Bob Devaney. Third down in a yard. Let's see what number they call here. It's Horn, number nine, and he cuts outside. Got the corner. Horn. First and goal, Nebraska. Robert Jones ran him out, but he got 13. That's what they need. They need to get spread the offense around.
get the defense looking away from Jamal and get him somebody else. Good blocking up front and good running. That's about the five hole this year. And then he took it out to about <laughs> <That's> nine. <right. laughs> the one hole uh, last year is the eight hole this year. <laughs> I mean, when you call that in the quarterback, and he's all right, let me make sure that this is right. Oklahoma State's defense in a hole now. It's first and goal, but Nebraska jumped the tight end. Phil Perez, uh, Phil Peets rather, came out of his stance or fell forward in it, I should say. And that's going to cost Nebraska five, so that first and goal Head will ball. come from the nine. Ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. You expect these types of things in first games. This is college football. There are no preseason games in college football right there in front of you. He just jumped it. He wasn't even close to the snap count. You know, whenever you do that, boy, you, you better duck your head because the defense is coming. That's right. So it's just outside the nine now. Nebraska first and goal. This time Pete's will line up on the left side. He'll try it over there. Both wide receivers. O'Halloran and Pilkington to the near side. O'Halloran now in motion with the handoff. His horn inside to the eight. Got only about a yard. Ball carried by number nine, David Horn. Brings up second down and goal. Greg Richmond again in on the tackle with Clay Coe, the defensive tackle. Clay Coe. Defensive line of Oklahoma State not doing too bad. Doing well. Richmond number 45 is probably the best in that, of that group. At seven sacks last year, he was a quarterback in high school that just grew out of the position. Yep. His 20th career start. On track to graduate in December. Good player, their defensive captain. Three tight ends set now for the Cornhuskers. Second down and goal from the eight. Jamal Lord rolling left. And he'll keep it now. And he lost a yard, and a flag flies into boot. Might have a penalty on Nebraska on top of things. And that first and goal at the four was looking pretty good, but it's looking a lot worse right now. I think he might be holding on the defense. No, it's on the offense. I saw some holding on the defense, too. So they're going to talk it over with the defensive captains and they're going to take the penalty. Albert Craig says, yeah, let's take it. Let's send him back as far as we can. Here's a call. Holding, Holding. on the offense. 10-yard penalty. Ten penalty. Repeat second down. So they're all the way out across the 18-yard line now. One of the other things they're looking at this year, see if we can find the holding. Right here. There it is. Right there. Oh, nice takedown. That's in. Uh, no, that's uh, Anderson. Anderson. Four wideouts now for Nebraska. It's second and goal from the 18 yard line. Lord option pitch to Horn. Boy, a lot of white jerseys there in a hurry. Yeah. Nice swarming defense by the Cowboys. They felt that one coming. Jamie Thompson came around the corner to help force things, and he got help from about seven of his friends. Yeah, good speed by all those guys in there, Craig and Pinson and, uh, and Cole and Richmond. Good defense on this side. What I was going to say earlier, Brad, was one of the other things they're looking at doing this year is um, call, when you have a penalty, call the number of the player out. Mm -hmm. They didn't do it. They're not doing it in this game, but I saw one. I was watching a game earlier today where they did. They do it in basketball. They say, well, you know who the foul is on. Right. A lot of the coaches want you to do that. So we, who's, the, who's the foul on? If you just call the number out, then they know real quickly. Bill Clay, defensive coordinator, hoping for a stop here on third down and long. Lord throwing on the run. Incomplete. Nobody open. Vernon Grant with a defense on Ross Pilkington out there. And so a first and goal becomes a fourth and goal and a long field goal coming up by DeAngelis. So he'll trot out. He has the only points of the day for Nebraska. Sandro DeAngelis, who actually was in a battle with Josh Brown for the kicking job early last year, then hurt his leg. Brown went on to have a sensational season. DeAngelis back healthy now. And they're going to ask him from the right hash mark to try to add 34 to his 28-yarder earlier. Cornhuskers trying to close the gap to a point. And the kick on the way. And it hits the upright. No good. Hit the left pipe. From the right hash to the left upright. 
And so Oklahoma State had a field goal blocked. Nebraska has one blocked by the upright. And our score remains what we've had for a long time. 7-3 Cowboys. Still 7-3 here with 5.48 remaining in the second quarter. DeAngelis on the bench just missed a 34-yard field goal by hitting the left upright. So the score remains the same. The ball comes out to the 20-yard line for the Cowboys. Here's our Aflac trivia question. Since 2000, which is the only top 25 Big 12 team Nebraska has defeated? We'll tell you after this play. From the shotgun is Josh Fields. Going to flare it out to Tatum Bell on the run. Lost the handle momentarily, but got it back and picked up about seven yards. I got a guess. Grease, you got a guess? You got a one? I'd say Oklahoma. Swanee? Uh, oh, I, I would definitely say Oklahoma. Matter of fact, Oklahoma in 2001. All right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. All right, let's see. Oh, it might be from stunts. A stunt play. There you go. Eric Crouch on the famous reception against the Sooners. And Eric on his way to the end zone and on his way to a 20 to 10 win. Nebraska over the Sooners. There's your answer. Your first Aflac trivia question from our group for the year. Second down and three. Counter to Bell and he slips. Nice job by Barrett Rude to make sure he slipped. Barrett, the middle linebacker, got out there. And you hear the rude cheer from the sellout crowd here. Rude said, you know, before the ball game, I know there's going to be 800 former players and coaches here, and I know they're going to ring the stadium, and I know we're all going to have hair standing up on our arms, but we have to keep focused. If we get all worried about all the All-Americans and conference champions and national champions we got here, but the one thing we won't do, we don't want to embarrass ourselves in front of our fellow players. Right. And he hasn't embarrassed himself today. He's done a nice job at that middle linebacker position. Third down. Rashawn Woods has been quiet until now. Yeah, they hadn't thrown to him the last couple of drives, and they got him the ball there. And a first down. Three catches all on third down for Woods, including a touchdown. And they'll move the sticks out to the 32-yard line. Bob, Bob and Brad, Rashawn Woods is a, is a very good-looking receiver, but don't be deceived by uh, how he looks in the uniform. He's got a little flag jacket on the side, and uh, both, notice both he and his brother wear them. Very rare for wide receivers, but the intent is he knows he's going to take a shot. He's taken a few today, but he's got him another first down, and here's Bell, open field tackle by DeMario Williams. One of the defensive captains, a senior out of Beckville, Texas, came out of the junior college ranks, and very seldom does that happen that you come from a JUCO and become a captain in Nebraska, but that's how much his teammates think of this guy. Second year in Nebraska, and he was a leading tackler last year, and he is, uh, just has all kinds of speed. Number seven gets there and makes the play. First defensive captain from a junior college rank since 1957. That's pre-Devanning. Just over four remaining in the half. 7-3. Second down and nine, Oklahoma State. Here comes some pressure on Fields. He's hit as he throws, and the ball just flutters out. It was intended for Woods. At least he was the closest. But Josh Fields is feeling the effects of Fabian Washington on the blitz from the corner, and he let him have it. Top of your screen, number three on a corner blitz. Fabian just gets his arm. Had he not done that, the ball would have been completed. Bob, wouldn't you almost rather take one right in the chest instead of in your throwing oh, elbow? Oh, he got him right sure. in the arm. For sure. There ain't no question about that. You know, when they grab, grab a part of your arm or they hit your shoulder like that, you never know what they're going to hurt. Oklahoma State has passed on all six of their third downs. You would assume that's going to happen here, but we got a timeout. The Valvoline Halftime Show with John and Terry, of course, coming up with highlights and analysis of our games today, but that's three minutes, 55 seconds from now. We got a timeout on the field. Oklahoma State with a big third down coming up. Cowboys, number 24 in the country, still leading 7-3. The Husker Nation up for their black shirt defense. Third down and nine, Oklahoma State. Nebraska looking for a stop here. Again, the Cowboys have thrown on all their third downs. You would assume it's the same here. Penalty markers down, and this one's whistled dead. Sam Mays, the guard, may have come out of his stance. And if so, it's going to be third down and longer. Dead ball. Dead ball. Full start. Full start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. 
And still, Bob, you and Swanee and I during the timeout were all still wondering about the right arm of Josh Fields after taking that hit earlier. Now he's got a third and 14 he's looking at. And, and, and making third and 14 is a heck of a lot more difficult than making picking up third and nine. A lot of silly fouls, especially penalties, especially on the offense. Timing. First game, as I said, there's no preseason games in college football to get these things worked out. Dewan Woods to the right, Rashawn Woods to the left. The slot man is Lindsey. Third and long. Fields. Pressure again, hit from behind. Demario Williams, and now Josh Fields is on the field again. They're hunting the quarterback in Lincoln. Talked about the defense and the offensive tackles. That's Hard Hardison, the left tackle, 57, trying to block Demorio Williams and not doing a very good job of it. And here comes a long snap now as Barden is set to punt away. And Josh Davis back at his own 30 set to return. Nebraska's always been a great punt blocking team. See if they put some heat on it. He got the kick away. Davis fields at the 30. Got by the first man. And he got about nine on the return. Chase Holland dragged him down. And Nebraska takes over. State fair going on. We can see it from here. That's the zipper, isn't it? Or what do you call that thing? I don't know. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the newly redesigned 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix. Fuel for the soul. Capital One, what's in your wallet? And Budweiser, the best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser. When's the last time you were at a state fair? Uh, it's been a while. Looks like fun, though, doesn't it? Probably the Texas State Fair is yeah, the last one yeah. I've been at. I tell you, well, you and I at Swanee were thinking about going over there and doing some swine judging the other day. We just <laughs> never made it. Here's Jamal Lord, option, trying to follow his blockers. And he swarmed under again. Oklahoma State doing some nice oh, pursuing oh, to the football in mass. Padgett McGee's the guy, the linebacker number 41, being helped up by Jeff now. Davies there, who was trying to block him. And now we've got an injured cowboy on the field. Looks like, like it's Robert Jones, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. So the corners in that five-man defensive backfield have both been beaten up a little bit. Darren Williams and uh, Robert Jones. Here's Jones. Covering Pilkington. Oh. Ouch. Mm. You saw the right lower leg get rolled up out on the block by Pilkington. Boy. Resilient young guys, I yeah. tell you. Yeah. So Lord now steps back into the huddle. Jamal Lord, for a lot of you Nebraska fans, you know it. Around the country, you may not. He used to wear number 10. And he said 10 was a number for a good guy. Five's a number for a leader, and I got to be a leader. So he changed numbers this year to the single digit number five. Second down and six for Nebraska. Lord, time to throw. And that one just slipped on him, I guess. Pilkington, the intended receiver. It bounced half the way there. Yeah. He completed about 46% of his passes last year. And Barney Cotton and Frank Solich said, we have got to get that up. And there's Barney right next to our score there on the top of the screen. we got to get that percentage up to around 55%. And, and, and against Nebraska, you're going to have a lot of single coverage on the outside guys because they're going to have eight guys in the box trying to stop the run. So, you know, a lot of these things are going to be single coverage. You just have to get the ball to them. Nebraska's only thrown it nine times. They've got a third and six here. And they'll throw it again. To the outside and way, way away from Dusty Kaiser, the tight end, the intended receiver. And uh, Jamal, who got the biggest ovation when the starting lineup was announced before the ball game, heard a few boo birds there yeah. as they'll head to the sideline. The, the Huskers have not scored since their first possession. That was their fifth possession. And that was probably the worst looking offense that we've seen all day. Yep. 
Uh, keep in mind also, guys, that uh, part of the job in restructuring the offense for Nebraska is also teaching the offensive line how to be better pass protectors and pass blockers. Many of these passes, they're letting the guys get a rush upfield. Kind of hard for Jamal to see around these big guys. So it's going to be a punting situation for Kyle Larson. And this one off the side of his foot after he had that booming kick earlier. This one comes way out. This is going to be out near midfield someplace. Solid says, I love the punter. He says, I love him. <laughs> he doesn't love him right now. No, he doesn't love him right now. So as Coach Solich looks on, only a 12-yard kick. Time to take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Nebraska got a 28-yard field goal from the Angeles to open things up, but Oklahoma State came right back. And it was Rashawn Woods on the touchdown from Josh Fields. Then Oklahoma State had a chance for a field goal. It was blocked, and Nebraska came back. The 34-yarder by the Angeles hit the left upright. So that's where we stand. We've been stuck on 7-3 for a long time. It's Three great, minutes left in the second quarter. Great field position right here. Plenty of time to score. Again, Oklahoma State winning that field position battle. They'll work from just outside their own 45-yard line. Fields play action on first down. Throws down the sideline. It's intercepted. Picked off by Lonell McPherson. It's a great play by McPherson. That man looked open, the intended receiver on the sideline, but he snatched it. McPherson is only 5'9". Here he is right here. The receiver just going to try to run a fade to the outside. Now watch McPherson. He jams him, and then he sees what's going on, and then he gets back to make the interception right here. And he had to go airborne and lay out for that interception. 5'9", he made himself look big to make that play. Did he ever. Davis now, the eye back, goes out to the 40-yard line. Henson made the stop, and we're down to 245 remaining. And there's a man that just made the defensive play for Nebraska. He's hearing nothing but good things right there. His first pick of his career. Marvin Sanders, the defensive backfield coach, talking to him about doing things right, working hard in practice. That's a good part of football right there. Second down and eight for the Cornhuskers. Lord drops back, play action, and now Jamal will take off. He's got a lot of field to work with. Cuts inside, inside the 40, all the way down to the 34-yard line, and now the boos become cheers. 27 yards he rips off. That's what you were talking about, Bill Clay, saying the best running back for Nebraska is taking the snaps. You almost don't want to get him out of the pocket because he runs so well. Josh Davis you saw in the middle of the field get a block that probably sprung him for about 11 extra at the end of the play. And Josh goes to the sideline after yeah. a nice block. He wasn't counting whole numbers there was he? No he wasn't. He didn't know where it was one and where it was nine. Uh, that was just talent just take off and play. 85 yards for Lord on the ground on 12 carries and a first down at the 33-yard line of Oklahoma State with 1.44 remaining. Flag down. Delay a game on Nebraska. There you see Coach Cotton telling the two quarterbacks, Stunts and Daly. We don't know which one's which, but as Bob said earlier, if you got a veteran and you got a kid that uh, yeah, he just, just arrived, <laughs> yeah. he still he just came from the New Jersey Turnpike. He's trying to find himself a way around Lincoln. Uh, Out of the shotgun now is Lord on first and 15. Jamal gets some pressure and down he goes. Nice job. From the outside, Greg Richmond and a loss of four. So Richmond, who Bob mentioned, had seven sacks last year, and that tied Kevin Williams for the team lead for this Oklahoma State team. And yeah. Nebraska just doesn't look sharp, and that's not surprising. First game, new head coaches, new, new uh, coordinators. Here's the option, and Davis, that's good old-fashioned Nebraska football there, and yeah. that's what they've done pretty well yeah. so far today. That's what they do the best. 
And now time is becoming a factor here. They're out of timeouts. Out of timeouts. 35 seconds. Trying to get something going here. This this is probably as bad as this offense is going to look all year because they're going to get better every game. Lord, trying to throw it out and incomplete. Burkle was the intended receiver. Frank Solich, who has called the plays up until this year. He hinted with us really last year when we were here a couple of times that he was starting to think about this and he was telling us that actually the process started a couple of years ago and he said I thought last year with Jamal Lord being so young so inexperienced it wasn't fair to bring in an offensive coordinator so he said I thought I could get us through the rough spots myself yeah. and then yeah. we'd worry about getting a coordinator this year so right. he kind of explained to us the process well, by if, which they changed if, some assistant coach if you are a head coach and an offensive coordinator you got to watch a lot of film just to call the plays and be the offensive coordinator trying to throw a screen pass davis got it got a block josh heading to the sideline nice looking play first down nebraska 17 seconds and now they've got themselves in field goal range because where they were sitting it would have been a 50-yard field goal attempt but they got 11 yards there yeah but they don't have josh brown this that's year. true Remember, DeAngelis hit the left upright with a 34-yard attempt. And right now, he's looking at about 38 and a half. But they've got 17 seconds to try to improve that position for him. Now, if you don't pick up a first down or get out of bounds, this could be the last play of the half. Four wideouts for Lord. But will he do it himself? Got to throw it. He is going to throw it. Got it out. Got it complete. Yep. Out of bounds. Good execution. Got it to Lily and picked up five more. And now they're looking pretty good. 13 seconds. And they are definitely within field goal range. With the passing game shaky at best, do you take a shot at the end zone here? With the 16 yard line being the line of scrimmage? Yep. Gonna bring in. I don't think this offense the kicker is, right now. is that sharp and running that smoothly to gamble. See, I mean, now the fans are thinking, why not one more play? Oh, yeah, yeah. But remember, it's second down. If they get a bad snap, they this, get covered. This still get another is, shot at a field goal. This offense is just learning to walk. 33-yard field goal attempts. Blocked. And yes. boy, now you are going to hear some boos, and you might hear more than that because the ball's coming back the other way in the person of Fata Carter. And now, here come the Boo-Birds. Duran blocked it. The fans thought maybe one more play. I was kind of thinking that and asking Bob about it, and instead they get a field goal blocked. Right here. Laid out and got it. Number 12, Duran. Here's another look. DeAngelis trying the field goal that would have made it a one-point ball game. See if he gets his ball up. No, he didn't get it up high enough. He's got to get it up higher. Great job by Duran. And Oklahoma State will just take a knee here. And they'll have a halftime lead on the road. And, and a bonus because because you're, you're uh, the, the home team crowds booing the home team. Yeah, that ain't good. Last time Oklahoma State won here was in 1960. They've got the lead at halftime. Let's check in with Swanick. Thank you, Brad. Coach Miles, you expected a real physical football game. Part of the game plan for your offense and defense to play with the kind of patience they demonstrated today? Absolutely. We, we know that this is going to be a fourth quarter game. We want to get into it and get the, get the kinks of the first game out and uh, get into the back half of this game. With this first half under your belt and the lead, will you think this offensive unit has come back and attack a little bit more like they did at the end of last season? We have to throw it deep and run the football. I mean, it's just that simple. Okay, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. On the road, Coach Miles and his Cowboys with the lead over Nebraska. 7-3, our halftime score. Let's join John Saunders and Terry Bowden now at Times Square Stadium in New York. Fellas. Here in Stillwater, beat Nebraska. They've got the lead here on the road, 7-3. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan back with you. And, partner, this is not what the Nebraska fans were looking for for the first half. No, and they uh, showed it a little bit, uh, booing some. But this is, like I said, this is as bad as Nebraska is going to be. New coordinators, new terminology on defense and offense, and a pretty good football team on the other side. Yeah, it's a, just a good thing they're playing at home. Pacific Life, first half statistics and summary looks like that. Yeah, and, and the key things are here and here. Nebraska has really controlled the football. 45 plays, 
and almost 20 minutes to 10 minutes in time of possession. But those two missed field goals, so three trips in the red zone for Nebraska, and they've only got three points to show for it. They had a field goal block, and they hit an upright. The quarterbacks, both around 50%. Josh Fields has a touchdown throw. Jamal Lord to the big edge, obviously, down there in the bottom. In the running, 80 yards. So Sandro DeAngelis, who hit one, missed one, and had one blocked, will kick off to start the second half. And Robert Jones and Vernon Morency are back deep for Oklahoma State. This one goes to the one to Morency, who had a nice kick return in the first half. This time, not so lucky. Got back to the 15 and then got powdered right there. Let's go down to Lynn Swan. Swanick. Well, Bob and Brad, obviously, Frank Solich was not happy about the first half of the turnover, but he felt the key was on special teams and the offense not finishing out its opportunity. If there was any one thing that seemed to have him a little bit upset, it was the fact that he said this football team in Nebraska is not playing up to its potential. They're a much better football team. He says we've got to come back in the second half, focus, play the games so they know how to play. They were focused on that kick coverage because Oklahoma State now, which had great field position in the first half, their average starting position was a 37-yard line. They're at their 15 on their first snap here in the third quarter. And right, Tatum Bell got about three. This is the worst field starting field position they've had the whole ball game. This is their sixth possession of the day. So they got three on the first snap. Out around the 18-yard line. Josh Fields, one touchdown toss and an interception in the first half. There's the first half possessions. Got a touchdown in the opening mark. Scored on the first one and then didn't do anything on the next one. Second down and seven for the Cowboys. Option pitch off misdirection. And Bell is very close to a first down. In fact, I think he's got it. Depends on which foot they're going to spot that at. When he's got it by inches. They'll move the chains. Tatum Bell, good first half for Tatum. He picks up a first down here. Tatum had 61 yards in the first half. He got a nice running game, a nice passing game, nice compliment. Nebraska defensively just doing a nice job. Take a look at uh, Josh. Uh, didn't hit a few times. No sacks, but uh, geez, I thought he got hit a lot more than that because been, whenever he got hit, I think we had it on. He's been field turf a few times today. Yeah. From the 25, he's going to roll the throw. Fires on the run. Incomplete. Rashawn Woods, the intended receiver. Nice coverage by Fabian Washington and a deep drop by Barrett Rood, the linebacker, in that coverage and a penalty marker on the play. You would assume it's going to be holding by where it's thrown, which was behind the line of scrimmage. But we'll wait and see. And Nebraska says we'll take it. So it's going against the Cowboys. Steve, what do you got? Holding. Holding. On the offense. Ten yard penalty. penalty. Repeat first down. Could be Hardison 57. Watch Hardison. That's hard to tell. Yeah, that's kind of a double bulldog job there. Hardison, we mentioned earlier, has never played tackle before. He's a converted bulked up tight end. And that's a very yeah, he left, important position he's at there. He left Oklahoma State, went home, and they gave him a call back. It was a tight end. The Times says, come on back and be a cowboy. Come on we, back and eat some more. We want you to come back and eat and gain some weight. <laughs> and, All right. First down. But first down and 20. Quick throw. Whoa. And a great play out there in the open field. Philip Bland came up from his safety spot. He read that beautifully, and Gabe Lindsay's dropped for a loss. You're right. It was a, a big play and a great throw. I mean, that's a tough pass to make. That straight out to the uh, to the wide receiver that's just running a little swing pass. You've got to be careful not to throw it backwards. Not an easy one to throw, not an easy one to catch, but an easy one for Nebraska to read that time, apparently, and it's going to bring up second down and 23 now, back at the 12-yard line. The field position's getting worse instead of better. Interesting what Les Miles was saying to Swanee on the way in before half. He said, we want to get this to the fourth quarter. We know it's going to be a fourth-quarter game. Play action for Fields. Got some open field in front of him. Lofts one out. Did he get enough on it? It is intercepted. Picked off. By Josh Bullocks. Fields 
floated that one too much intended for Woods, and it's intercepted, this second interception of the day. Well, you're right, he was on the move. Trying to get the ball downfield, and he made a great play that Bullocks. Let's take a look from behind the quarterback. He's going to roll to his right side. He's going to scramble to the top right of your screen. Now, right now, see right here, if he throws the ball down here, I think he makes it. But he hangs it up too much to the inside and lets the receiver come back and get it. Great shot there and a great coverage by Bullocks to get the interception. Nebraska now from its own 45. The toss to Davis. Davis got it out for about three. Lawrence Pinson Swanee, made the stop. Swanee, I'm wondering on that last throw, is, is the wind a big factor down there on the field? Uh, the, the wind's not really a big factor down here. If you look to your right, you see the American flag up there. It's swirling pretty good. If it gets up high, it's a problem. He was throwing into the wind, so that wind may have held it up to some degree. But you remember when we talked to the offensive coordinator of Oklahoma State? He said, we're going to throw it downfield to Woods four or five times, even when he's covered, because he can go up and get the ball. Yep. That was just a bad pass on that part. On he that just, he just needed to get it down further. Now Lord trying to get one down to his fullback, and he does, and he got it to Judd Davies complete. That's Davies' first catch <laughs> since two years ago. In a couple of years, that's right. We were talking to Barney uh, yesterday, Cotton, and he, he said, we're going to throw to the fullbacks. He's got to catch 20 balls this year. I said, well, you he's better got, get going. <laughs> he's got his sixth career catch right there. <laughs> He didn't catch a pass last year. Judd's in his third season as a starting fullback. They call him the thinker on the team, the studious one. He's already taken his uh, MCATs a couple of weeks ago as a pre-med student. Part of nine Cornhuskers that have already graduated. That's a high for them at this time of year. Here's Jamal Lord. He's also graduated, and the grad school man is out of bounds. First down at the 40-yard line. That flag drop out of the official's pocket or was it thrown on the sideline? It's lying right on the chalk stripe at the 42 yard line. I don't know if it fell out of his pocket or we have a penalty at the end of the play. It was thrown Brad and it, he looked like he, the official threw it uh, with, with a little passion. I'm not sure what the penalty is right. but Jamal Lord gave that guy an aggressive straight arm. Well, that that might be line. it. He might have got him in the chops. This might be against Lord. Personal foul against Nebraska so that negates the first down run. Now, see, this is where I'd hope they, they'd give a number out so we know exactly. We might be able to tell by the replay, but I just got done talking about those nine graduates, and that wasn't very smart. No, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> they got nine guys in graduate school, but see if Jamal punches him with his right hand. There you go. Yep. That right hand in the face. You can throw a stiff arm, but you can't throw a punch like this. You can't hit him in the face. This is like oh, yeah. offensive yep. face mask. Yeah, you yeah, can't do this. And that's a good call by the official. I mean, instead of a first down now at the uh, inside the 45 yard line, it's going to be third and 10. 80 rushing yards. He's outrushed the Oklahoma State team, which for the most part is Tatum Bell's rushing yards. On third and 10 now. Lord, look out. He got leveled as he tried to get that swing pass out there, a screen pass, but it was blown up by Antonio Smith. He just got in the backfield too quickly. If, if Nebraska on third and passing tries to be a passing pocket team, they're going to get blown up every time. They're, they can't do that. The offensive line can't pass block like normal teams pass block yet. And Jamal can't throw the ball like a uh, normal quarterback short. He can do a lot of other things that normal quarterbacks can't do, but he can't sit in the pocket and throw. Arnie Cotton has some words for his quarterback as he got to the sideline. And now Gabe Lindsay waits on Kyle Larson's punt. Larson had a booming punt his first time. Then he shanked one off the side of his foot the last time he was out there. Nebraska adjusts its protection on fourth and ten. This one, nice looking kick again. Fair catch called for at the 14 yard line by Lindsay. So that's where Oklahoma State's going to work offensively when we come back. 1137 remaining third quarter. Still Cowboys by four. He's going eight. Nebraska band trying to fire up the Nebraska defense as it looks at the Oklahoma State Cowboy offense at the 14 yard line. 
Following the punt, Oklahoma State still leading 7-3. Been stuck on 7-3 since the first quarter. Here's Tatum Bell, who's been the majority of the offense today for Oklahoma State, but Fabian Washington drops him at his tracks. No gain on that one. And it'll bring up second down and long. So Josh Fields, who has a touchdown throw today to Rashawn Woods, his favorite receiver and one of the very best in the country, also has two interceptions today. Yep. And I, and I knew the last one. I know he feels like he needed to get the ball out to give Woods an opportunity to make a play. It was underthrown so much that he didn't have a chance to even knock it down. Last seven games of last season, he averaged about 316 yards passing a game. And as you saw, not much so far today against Nebraska. Bell lost the ball. And the Cornhuskers scoop it up, and it's rude. Touchdown. For Nebraska, it could be a rude awakening. Finally, they score, and the defense does it. So the guy who said we had to stay focused with all the former players and all Americans back kept his focus there scooped it up took it 15 yards and Nebraska leads nine to seven try to make it ten extra point is good. Tatum Bell first time he's lost the handle today and the middle linebacker for Nebraska was there to scoop it. Bell is going to put the ball on the ground number seven. Looks like he just drops this ball before he gets to the line. Right there, the ball comes out. And Root comes by and picks it up and says, let me have it. I'm going. To the end zone goes Root. And here's another look. You'll see it pop out of the left arm of Bell when he's trying to make the cut. Nobody touched him. Nobody touched him. And the drive coaches nuts. Dropping the ball when nobody hits you. So Barrett Rood, who opened the season on the Butkus watch list. It's a hefty list right now. It gets pared down. That'll, that'll help him. As Bob said earlier, a hometown boy from Lincoln, and there was never a doubt where he was going to play football. And you heard the chance before of Rood, 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 and now 78,000 plus in unison calling his name after he scoops up Bell's fumble and scores. That's the first touchdown of the year for the Cornhuskers. And it came on defense. And it came on defense. And it's awakened the crowd. The Angeles to kick. And a good one it is. Four yards deep in the end zone. Williams is going to bring it out. Gutsy move. Cuts outside. And he does a good job with it. Still on his feet. And he got out to the 28-yard line. Ball came loose. Was it blown dead? I think so. He tried to stretch out. Dangerous move trying to stretch out to get that one more yard. And when the ball hit, it popped up in the air. Nebraska almost thought they had another one. Our college football triple header will wrap up tonight. Most of you see the defending national champion Buckeyes of Ohio State against Washington in the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT. Some of you'll see Florida State and North Carolina in ACC action. It's all tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Check the local listings for the game in your area. I don't anticipate the Buckeyes will miss Claret that much. They got two pretty good running backs behind him. I think Ross and uh, Maurice Hall, the other Mo, I think might be the guy that carries the mail. Here's a toss. Seymour Shaw. And you see more rude. Whoa. Crowd's getting into it for number 38. Oklahoma State's last four possessions, one play and an interception, one play before halftime, four plays and an interception, and two plays and a fumble. That's ugly. That's not pretty. As you would say, I don't like that. Yeah, this, this was not even a possession right here. It was just one play at the end of the half. So yeah. the last three possessions, they turned it over. So Shaw, the second string tailback in there. On second down and nine, he'll get the call again. Not much. Bernard Thomas comes over from his defensive line spot. The other number five for Nebraska, and he makes the stop. Bernard was redshirted a year ago. Did play.
play the previous two seasons and now coming back here and uh, he's a guy that's made a lot of noise. Defensive end says he'd like to break the Nebraska sack record this year <laughs> for, for a guy who only has one career sack. That's, yeah. that's a pretty tall cut. <laughs> yeah. Tatum Bell comes back in. Thomas is the guy that's forced the third and long though. Third and six Oklahoma State trying to hurry up. Here comes a blitz on fields. Look out. Down he goes. He froze. There's a flag down too. He froze in the pocket. I think the whistle might have blown, but nobody heard it. And all Josh Fields is hearing is the ringing in his head right now. Was it delay of game? So he takes a shot he doesn't have to take. <laughs> yeah. Every, he, if, he stood there like he heard the whistle, but nobody else heard it. Well, they get a free shot on the quarterback there. So it's going to be third down at about 11. Les Miles team with the win last year. 24-21 at Lewis Field, but it's a lot bigger chore to do it at Memorial Stadium. They trail 10-7 in Nebraska. And a third down and long. Fields with a blitz coming, slip screen, Wood slips down. Makes the catch, but goes down immediately, and it's time to punt for the Cowboys. And now the fans are starting to get into it a little bit. Well, the defense for Nebraska has turned this game around in the second half. So the punt will come from inside the 15 from Cole Farden. Jacob Dressen's done a nice job so far snapping it to him in his first ball game in that capacity. This one's a little high, but it's fielded well and it's boomed far. Davis waiting on it at the 22. Again got by the first man, kept his balance. Josh Davis weaving his way out to the 39-yard line. 51-yard kick, a 17-yard return. Nebraska in front now. They sent something in Lincoln. 819 left to the third. All right, John here. It's Nebraska certainly not pulling away, but they are in front courtesy of that fumble return. All right, Alabama. 10-7. Pulling for Mike Shula down there. That's a tough situation he went in under. And you've known him since he was in uh, he diapers. Was, he was throwing, uh, throwing balls around, towels with me. Here's a give to Josh Davis. Davis, and he's got some tough yardage again, nine yards. Out to the 48-yard line. Hinson and Jones brought him down, but Josh Davis now taking it on his shoulders, not only as a return man, but the eye back in the Nebraska offense. Josh has lost some weight from a year ago and has made him a little bit quicker. Down 10 pounds or so, and he gets it out for nine yards, second down and one. He gets the call again, puts both arms around it, gets it into Oklahoma State territory down near the 48-yard line, first down Nebraska. 7.39 remaining in the third quarter. We mentioned all the alum back, three of them Heisman Trophy winners. The most recent was two years ago, and it was this guy, one of the famous runs of the season. Do you remember this one? I don't know how many guys he passed for Missouri, but he got all the way to the end zone, and he could lift the trophy that makes you the top player in college football, Eric Crouch. We spent some time with Eric yesterday, and we're going to talk to him in a second. Josh Davis bangs his way down to about the 42-yard line. Swanee. Well, Eric, it wasn't that long ago you were running on this football field. You had a couple years trial with the pros. You missed this game. You missed being out there. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, being back here and being around this atmosphere is definitely something I've, I've missed for the last couple years greatly. Frank Solich made a lot of changes coming into this season. Regardless of what happens this afternoon, do you think the changes will be good for the long term? I really do. I think that, uh, you know, you can see that's electric offense, electric defense. The defense is playing well, and they've scored some touchdowns and make some big plays. And I think that he made the right decisions uh, based on what kind of season they had last year. All right, thank you. Good luck to you. What are you yeah. doing, by the way? Well, I'm working for uh, ABC here in town, uh, Channel 7, uh, KETV. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a great run so far, and I'm, I'm really excited about the experience that they're giving me. So you did a good job getting the yeah. local plug in. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Tell you Thanks, what, yeah. it's like our fourth guy in the crew now. Eric Crouch, Good heck kid. of a player. And, yep. 
On that run by Josh Davis, a personal foul against Oklahoma State. Rips off 15 more free yards for the Cornhuskers. So they're down now to the 28-yard line. Aaron Williams. And he takes a swing at uh, Tim Liley. Liley was kind of shoving him from the back, and the second guy got caught. Let's yep. put it that way. Yep. Davis, they're just putting it on number one's pads right here, and he takes it inside the 25 to the 24. They mentioned Josh's dad, Tony, played 73 to 75 here, and still the number 19 rusher all time in Nebraska history with over 2,100 yards on the ground. So this second generation Cornhusker now in this third quarter is carrying the load. 72 yards for Josh as the starting eye back. There's his numbers. Second down and seven. We're down to six and a half to go. Third quarter. The toss to Davis. Maybe to the 21. It'll be third and about three. Mike Williams made the tackle. The big fella inside, number 98, 290-pound senior. Time permitting. Remind you to stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post-game report. John and Terry will have scores and highlights from around the country for you. Our earlier games today, Missouri a win over Illinois. Georgia put a thud on Clemson in Death Valley. And our nightcaps tonight, Florida State, North Carolina in the ACC, and Washington against the defending champion Buckeyes. Davis straight up the middle. And right now that Cornhusker offensive wall of Incognito, Erickson, Sewell, Anderson, Billy Waldrop, those guys, they're starting to move the pile a little bit, Grease. They are, and there's three starters back in that offensive line. Erickson is one, Incognito, and Waldrop on the other side. One of the guys that was supposed to be in that line, uh, Junior Togoi, is uh, not there and was dismissed from the team, so that gave Anderson an opportunity to step in and play very well at the right guard spot. There's the rushing yardage, 207 for Nebraska. Six straight runs on this drive. You don't expect that's going to change too much. And this time it's Davies, the fullback. He stood up in the hole. And right about at the line of scrimmage, Antonio Smith made the stop. Got a little bit gimpy getting up from the bottom of that pile. There's Frank. Uh, he's got the headphones on, so he knows which plays are going in the game. But he's staying away from Cotton, the offensive coordinator. Let them do their stuff. It's funny. Bob and Brad, he said he was going to follow the offense down the field so he could be in that offensive mix. But, you know, then when the offense is off the field, he checked, you know, with the defensive personnel, stay in tune, but he wasn't going to stick his head into the huddle every time. Frank said, at times I'll interject, at times I'll cross my fingers. Right now his team's in front. Here's the option keeper for Lord. Jamal dives down to about the 11-yard line. I thought it was funny yesterday when we were talking to Barney Cotton. We always talk to the offensive and defensive coordinators. We just sat down with Barney, and, and we were running a little bit late, and then it was about time for uh, Frank. To so anyway, Solich comes in the meeting when we're talking to Barney Cotton. And I said to him, I said, all right. He said, we just sit down with a new offensive coordinator, and here you come in and listen. <laughs> Looking over his shoulder right away. Huh? Uh, he laughed. Third down and four. Davis hit as he tried the to get the hole. Out. The ball came out. Oklahoma State's got it. Scooped up by Robert Jones. I don't know whether he was down or not, but they're giving it to Oklahoma State. The big hit was Thomas Wrights. He met Josh Davis in the hole. The ball came out, and Robert Jones recovered. I think it may come out when he hits the ground. I don't know, but let's take a look. Well, the fans are booing because they've just seen it on the replay yeah. screen on the scoreboard. Yeah. 4 6 remaining third quarter. Nebraska by three. <laughs> Oklahoma State apparently, it appears, got a gift on that fumble by Josh Davis. We'll tell you why after this snap on first down from the 12. And it's Tatum Bell who got out to the 15-yard line as we go back to the fumble by Davis. The ball has to come out before he hits the ground. It does not. His elbow is on the ground, and the ball comes loose then. That should not have been 
a fumble. So Oklahoma State gets an opportunity just when it looked like Nebraska was just going to keep jamming it down their throats to try to further their lead. 10-7 the way it is. Nebraska by a field goal. Second down and seven. Oklahoma State. Josh Fields has been ineffective in this second half. Flares this one out. Tough catch. And a first down throw out to Gabe Lindsay. Yeah, tough pass and catch, but when it executes, it's like a long sweep, a long handoff. The wide receiver out there blocks, and Lindsay did a nice job picking up a first down. It's not quite like that bubble screen Purdue has used so effectively, but it's that kind of pass. It's very similar. You know, the bubble screen comes to the inside. This goes to the outside. Oklahoma State hasn't run a play in Nebraska territory in their last six drives. And remember, we talked about how great their field position was in the first half, and it's the exact opposite here in the second half. But they do have a first down now and a little more room to work. Fields wants to throw the screen back this way to Lindsay incomplete. As we take a look now at our Chrysler passing playbook. Bob. All right, one another way. The quarterback doesn't have to stay in the pocket all the time. Get him roll out a little bit. Fake him this way. The quarterback is going to come here. Get everybody moving this way on the defense. And then roll him back this way, which buys time. And the tight end is going to slide to the outside. A little fake like it's a running play. Now stop it right here. Look what you got. He's got great angles right there to the guy he's going to. Get him outside the pocket. Fake run. Get him outside the pocket. Mix it up. In pocket, outside the pocket. Second down and 10. Blitz is coming on play action. Josh Fields hit as he throws again. Ball is scooped up by Nebraska. Ryan Bingham's got it. Fields never saw him coming. Jarrell Pippins, I think, is the guy that got the hit. He was named the special teams captain after practice yesterday. He gets the hit on the quarterback. Right here, he's going to come right up the gut. He never saw him. He's, he's looking the other way and never saw him. So the defense, first it was Rude, now it's Bingham on the play by Pippins that forced the fumble, and Nebraska is knocking on the door again inside the 14-yard line. First and 10, Nebraska. This time it's David Horn. Horn bouncing off people and down to the five. Got almost nine yards. Duran made the stop. But after Josh Davis did a lot of the work on the last drive, Horn, the fresher tailback now, and he comes back for Nebraska to get it down to the five-yard line. Packed house for the 256th straight time at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew with 240 remaining third quarter. Oklahoma State has led much of this game, but the Huskers scooped up a fumble and scored with their defense to take a 10-7 advantage. They've just recovered another fumble to give it back to their offense, trying to add to the score. And this time, Oklahoma State, penalty markers down, swarms all over David Horn. No gain on that one, and a face mask, so there was a gain. And boy, just when it looked like they were going to force a third down and short, they come up with a costly, costly penalty. So this will be half the distance to the goal and a first down. Personal foul. Personal foul. Face, mask. Face mask. On the defense. On defense. Half the distance to the goal. Defense. First down. Brad, let's go back and take a look at this uh, fumble when Fields was dropping back. No, no, we got, we got something else here. Okay, that's a face mask. Right there, that's yep. no question there. There's no doubt about that. All right. We're going to take a, take a look at that other play in just a minute. First and goal now, Nebraska. And driving to the end zone. Touchdown. Judge Davies, the fullback. <laughs> Davies scores. And Nebraska typical, extends its lead. In typical Nebraska fashion. <laughs> exactly. The fullback scores on a three-yard plunge. <laughs> Extra point by DeAngelis. Upcoming. The kick is up and good. 
but just over two minutes remaining in the third quarter. Nebraska was looking at a three-point deficit for so long, and now they lead by 10. Take a look at the offensive line on that side. Wildrip, Anderson, center Sewell. That's just grinding things out there. That's what I said, typical Nebraska yep. fashion. Let's go back and look, go back and look at the turnover, the one that Josh Field was hitting in the backfield. Is his arm coming forward or not? No, it's not. No, that's a good call. That's a good call. And that one was scooped up by Bingham. As you see, he's gonna swallow that one, big number 59 right there. And that led to a 14-yard drive in three plays and a little over a minute for Nebraska to extend its lead now to 17 to 7. And now they've got Oklahoma State knowing that they've got 17 minutes to do something about this, and you're going to see more and more Josh Fields, but are you going to see more and more of those blitzes that are starting to take care of that passing game? They're having more fun now at Memorial Stadium than they were for most of this game, that's for sure. They've got two minutes to play uh, going from our right to left, and there's the wind blowing the ball off the tee. When they turn around and go the other way in the fourth quarter, they'll have the wind at their back. And that is when they looked better on their opening drive of the ball game. They were going that direction. So DeAngelis will tee it back up. In fact, Fabian Washington says, I'll give you a little help, partner. Now put a finger down on it. Jones and Morency are back deep. Morency had one good return to open the ball game. They got Oklahoma State in great field position for their opening score of the ball game. And this kick nailed. And no question there's some wind up there. And Jones has to take a knee. So Oklahoma State will start from the 20-yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Chrysler, Pacifica, well beyond the SUV. Boston Beer, when you're ready for a distinctive brew, Samuel Adams is always a good decision. And Singular, the wireless company that fits you best. Now we're in Lincoln, Nebraska on about a 70 degree day. Had we played this a week ago, it would have been about 30 degrees warmer. Perfect late August day for football. Hasn't been a perfect day for Josh Fields. If I'm Josh right now, I'm thinking just keep this ball for two minutes and we'll get the wind at our back. And with that in mind, they go to the ground. Tatum Bell got about a yard. Memorial Williams there to make the stop on him. Williams has had a good ball game. He's a rangy guy. He has. He is a, he is a very athletic player. He's an outside linebacker. 6'1 and 215. He can play strong safety if they needed him to. Demorio went to junior college. We mentioned he took a year off after high school before he went to junior college, laid some oil pipes, and then said, you know, maybe football on scholarship isn't a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get on that construction crew. That'll send you back to school. Here's the toss to Bell. And Bell, nice run out across the 30-yard line. He's got a first down. That's what they need. They need some running game to go along with a passing game that, that hasn't been existent here today. That's going to be a first down. Coming up Thursday night, the NFL season gets a super start on ABC. At 8 Eastern, Aerosmith, Britney Spears, Mary J. Blige, and Aretha Franklin take the stage for NFL kickoff live. At 9, it's Curtis Martin and the Jets to take on the Redskins. The weekend wraps up on Monday night when the defending champion Buccaneers take on Donovan McNabb and the Eagles. NFL football set to start on ABC Sports. Did you say Thursday night there, boss? Thursday night's the big party. Starts on Thursday. Monday yeah. night football on Thursday night. You know, Madden's been saying for years, we need bunting like baseball. We need a big opening night. So <laughs> he's got it. Thursday night. Thursday night. All right. And speaking of Aretha, boy, Bo Bellini, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska, said all he wants to do is get a little respect for his defense. <laughs> and they've been doing a pretty good job this afternoon. Rashawn Woods has caught a few pass. He got open for a touchdown, but no big plays. I think it's indicative of a defense is playing as a team, not straying from their assignments and just staying with it. That's what he was worried about if they'd resort back to some of their old habits. Here's Fields to throw the quick slant complete to the 40-yard line. That's uh, Dewan Woods. That's Rashawn's little brother. When you put pressure on the quarterback, as they've done all day, that tends to keep the uh, completions down to, to an outstanding receiver. 
Well, it's a dramatic change for Bo Pelini in the defense, as Bo was telling us. Nebraska always known for the most part as a man-to-man -man team, and they're playing a lot of zone out there today. They are, and, and the techniques are different. There's no question about it. You have to be taught how to play zones. 90% of the time in the past, they played man-to-man. Now they're going to play more than 50% zones. We played three quarters in Lincoln. Nebraska leads at the end of three by 10. Oklahoma State will have the win, though, if they can make a comeback in the fourth quarter. 17 to 7 Cornhuskers. Our presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. Lil Red making his way through the sellout crowd. With 15 minutes to go, his Cornhuskers ahead 17 to 7. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew in Lincoln. Oklahoma State had the lead for much of the game. Now they've got to play from behind, and they have the wind at their back as they get a first down on third and short. Tatum Bell out there to about the 44, 45 yard line. Oklahoma State needs to settle down on offense. Four of their last five possessions, they've turned it over. Two fumbles, two interceptions. They put three blockers out wide and toss it to Tatum Bell, and he goes out near midfield, almost got five. Demorio Williams this, comes out to make the stop. This is an offense, Brad, that was, was one of the best in the country last year, 13th in the nation in scoring. But now they come out, they were on a roll at the end of last season. They have to put the first three quarters behind them and just say, hey, we're down 10 points. we got a whole quarter to go. Forget about the turnovers. Let's go from here. We've got good players. Nobody's hurt. Let's go play. Rashawn Woods, the All-American receiver, four catches, only 38 yards. He does have their touchdown. Fields throws to him on the quick slant, and he's got a first down, a pickup of about 13. The turnovers for Nebraska has been the story. The scooped up fumbles. First, the interception, beautiful as McPherson laid out for that one. Another one, a pass lofted out by Woods, then Bear Root picks up the fumble, scores from 15 yards out. Then on the hit by Pippins from behind, Bingham scoops this one up. That led to a 14-yard touchdown drive, and that's why the Cornhuskers have the lead. Shaw comes into the Oklahoma State backfield now. They've got a first down in Nebraska territory. It's the toss to him there. Trevor Johnson's gonna make the tackle after about a two-yard gain. First Oklahoma State play in Nebraska territory this half. Yeah. I think the story of this game so far is the Nebraska defense with the four turnovers, the, uh, the score, the touchdown, uh, the, and, uh, and they're, they're holding the uh, passing game for Oklahoma State under 100 yards. Maybe a missed face mask. Oh, just kind of grazed across. No call on it. Second down and eight. Ninth play of the Oklahoma State drive. And again, for the most part, the wind is with them. It has been a crossing wind at times, as Swanee mentioned. Demario Williams. Man. Just a great play. He's the Will linebacker, and he'll come flying in here. Yeah, Will is number seven. Sees it, gets inside the blocker right there, and makes the play. Boy, and to get around, that would be block. Yeah. It looked like he was going to be picked off, and that exactly. just shows how quick he was. Yeah, you, you're exactly right. If he goes inside, he better be right, because if he gets blocked, there's nobody to contain. Loss of a yard. He's trying to get... The Husker Nation in full throat against Fields, who's going to have to work from the shotgun. Third down and 11 for the Cowboys. Fields under pressure again, overthrows Woods, the intended receiver, Dewan Woods, and it's fourth down. He was pressured from both sides by the defensive ends working against those two tackles. And this is no man's land for Oklahoma State, Bob. Are they going to try to pick this up? No, I guess they're going to bring out the punting unit. Here's the heat coming on fields. Yeah, both of both of the offensive linemen that replaced the two tackles last year had problems blocking the defensive ends, and that was it. That's the difference from last year in this offense. This is where you don't want to waste a punt. You want to pin your opponent as far back as you can. Farden to kick. Well, he got it high enough, that's for sure. 
but can they cover it? Nope, too deep. And so Nebraska will come out to the 20. Not much gained there for Oklahoma State with that kick. 17-7, Cornhuskers. State added in Nebraska territory, forced to punt, and now after the punt that went in the end zone, the Cornhuskers work from their own 20-yard line with the lead. Lord on the give to David Horn. Whew, man, did he get met in the hole. John Holland has been a guy that's been all over the place today. Number 17, he's made some big plays. A lot of wind today in the, the banners of the alumni ringing around Memorial Stadium. New Yorkers for Nebraska. They got everybody for Nebraska. They come from near and far. And speaking of far, we know they're watching today on satellite. Major John Schaefer, HHC 35th Infantry uh, Division, and about 100 Husker fans watching live on satellite from Bosnia. Major, to you and all you Husker fans, thanks for being over there, and thanks for being with us. All right. Second down and eight for Nebraska from the 22-yard line. Play action. Jamal Lord wants to throw on the roll and going deep for Harry and got it. Out of bounds. Big play. Nebraska through the air. Down to the 45-yard line. That's what Lord can do outside the pocket where he's got more time to throw. Just throw it on the run. 33-yard pick up to the 45-yard line. There he is here. He's just going to go across as Lord gets outside the pocket. Number 11 goes down and deep. Throw it as far as you can. He threw this one right on the money, too. Only the third pass of the half for Nebraska, and it's a big one. And now they go back to the ground, and Horn goes for about six yards, almost seven. That was a big play there to get Nebraska out of the shadow of their own goal post and in and, and good field position. And now, as Harry and in the huddle there with a big play, now they can go back to that ground game and just grind and grind and grind with 10.45 left in the ball game. And now we see the total yardage is over 300 for the Cornhuskers. That doesn't look any different than it has in the last 40, 40 years. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> Lauren on the carry off the left side. Got a couple, and while they head back to the huddle, we'll head back to Times Square Stadium and John Saunders. Penn State in a little more of a battle than you might expect against Temple right now with a 10-point lead, but Sean McHugh barrels his way into the end zone to open up a little bit of breathing room. Right now, Penn State leading by 17, about seven minutes left in the game. The only time in past history that Temple's given Penn State yeah. some trouble. Penn State lost a lot of players. I think they lost four players in the first round of the NFL draft. They'll be here in a couple weeks. Yep. We'll be here with them. Jamal Lord, quarterback draw. Spins his way about a yard short of a first down. Got down to the 36-yard line. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. The clock ticks under nine and a half. On a cloudy, cool August day in Lincoln, Nebraska, the Cornhuskers trailed for much of the game, but their defense came alive with two fumble recoveries, one that was scooped for a touchdown, one that led to a touchdown, and now they've got the game with a 10-point lead and a little over nine minutes to go. Fourth down and a big one here. Fourth and a yard. Davies, who got the last touchdown, has the first down. Oops, and a swing taken there. I don't know if anybody caught that, but that wouldn't be good. Antonio Smith took a swipe at somebody, and the officials, luckily for Oklahoma State, didn't see it, or that would be another 15-yarder. Look from behind the offense. All the linemen straight ahead blocking. Little gap over there on the right side. Davies finds it. And for the first time, I think, since before the game, the chant of Go Big Red has finally come out here at Memorial Stadium. Took a while for the fans to warm up to their team today. First down at the 34-yard line. It's Horn behind Davies in the eye, and the eye back gets the toss. Horn cutting outside or trying to, throws a stiff arm of his own, and a flag flies in. And for the second time today, we may have an offensive 
push to the face and a personal foul on Nebraska. Remember, we had one earlier on Jamal Lord, and I don't know if that's going to be the call or not, but Horn certainly got a whole bunch of his tackler. Yep. You can go a whole season and never see this call, and we've seen it twice today. There it is. We have a personal foul. Offensive face mask. 15-yard penalty. I don't. He had his hand on the face mask, but he didn't didn't yank it or jerk it or twist it. It's much easier for a ball carrier to reach the other guy's helmet than it is to stick your hand into his shoulder pads. Now that's that's on his. There it's his fingers are kind of laid over it, I guess. But there was no twisting or yanking or pulling on it. At any rate, it's going to back up Nebraska's offense. But this is college football, and they're trying to get away from guys going to the helmet, yep. either offensively or defensively. Frank Solich looking for his 50th win as Nebraska's head coach. And you know, you talk about how Devaney and Osborne are revered here, and those guys both had a couple of seasons that weren't so great either, and there was a little bit of unrest in Lincoln. Yeah. And here, Frank today, if he wins his 50th game, would be only one game behind Tom Osborne as far as how long it took him to get that 50th win. So. As you said earlier, Bob, really last season's the only one that wasn't that good. The rest of them were nine wins or more. Time permitting, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report. John and Terry will be in New York with scores and highlights from around the country. Bob and Grant, we talked about change in Nebraska an awful lot. One change that they hope they see the results of here in the fourth quarter is one that most fans probably won't see. Frank Solich changed his strength coach. Bob Epley, who is still here as the athletic director, uh, associate athletic director, was legendary for the weight and strength training program. But Brian Bailey is a man who's taken over here. And the guy said he really put them through their paces during double days. Oklahoma State with the strength right there on a Albert Craig blitz. Just knocked Jamal Lord way back at the 48-yard line. Craig, who's been a starter a long time in that secondary. Long time. He's a four-year starter. There he is here. Just going to get right to the inside. Lord will never see him. Turns his back, fakes the other way. Craig, a four-year starter, second in tackles. Had 10 last year against Nebraska. Comes up with a big one there, and that's third down and 28. I don't know what Barney Cotton's got in his third and 28 playbook, <laughs> yeah. but we're about to see it. Uh -huh. It's going to be Judd Davies. I don't know if he'll get 28, but he got a big chunk of it back. As a big fullback rumbles down to the 37-yard line. No, nobody expected on third and 28 the fullback up the middle. Yeah. So now it's fourth down and about 13. This is not field goal range for DeAngelis because it would be about a 54-yard field goal. So on fourth down and long, what are we going to see? Have the offense. Have the offense run it again. Yep. If you punt it, you just gotta you gotta just squib kick it. This is almost exactly the same thing we saw with Oklahoma State going the other way. It's when I said, do you take a shot here? Because yeah. if you kick it in the end zone, you don't gain much. They're gonna think about it, is what's gonna happen here. They and delay a game. They don't they don't care about the yards because right. they're gonna punt it anyway. Yeah, now they're gonna bring out the kicking unit. So the clock stops 7.03. Remaining in the ball game. 17 to 7, Nebraska. While we wait for the kick, reminder, our triple header wraps up tonight. You'll see defending national champion Ohio State in the BCS Spotlight game against Washington. BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT. Some of you'll see Florida State and North Carolina in the ACC tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Look out for Florida State. Kyle Larson hanging one. Fair catch called for, and they get out of the way, and Nebraska's going to be able to down it inside the 10, way down at the 6-yard line. Great coverage by the special teams. And Looks like they've worked on that once or twice. Do we have a penalty marker down? We do at the line of scrimmage.
offsides against Oklahoma State. So that'll be declined because they want the Cowboys to have to take it down at the six yard line. An offside penalty and it is declined. So with 654 left, Oklahoma State's in a hole deep in their own territory, down 10 to a team they haven't beaten here since 1960. Less than seven minutes remaining. Oklahoma State now has to work from its own six yard line. They're down 10. Nebraska trying to pay back the Cowboys for the loss in Stillwater last year. On the ground is Oklahoma State. Maybe surprisingly, but they're trying to get themselves some room to work. About a four yard pickup for Bell and that vaunted passing attack, Bob, that we talked about about Oklahoma State at the beginning of the ballgame. It better start showing up or it's going to be too late. Well, they've only got 97 yards passing all day and less than 200 yards total offense. They've averaged over 400 last all of last year. They better start to hustle. There's going to be probably less than six minutes left after this play is completed, whatever it is. Second down and six, just inside their own 10. Fields zips it, incomplete. Badjuma, the tight end, was the intended receiver. Clock stops, 6.14 left here. Let's check in elsewhere. Times Square Stadium in New York, here's John. Brad, very marquee matchup early in the season, USC against Auburn. This is after an interception. Matt Leiner replacing Carson Palmer, Heisman Trophy winner, five yards to Mike Williams. Pete Carroll's squad has a lead, 7-0 at Jordan Hare. Brad, back to you. That's he left-handed. He's left-handed. All right. Trying to take over for Carson Palmer, the Heisman Trophy winner, and it ain't easy to win at the Plains down there. Auburn people are fired up about that team, so a big lead for USC early. Fields trying to get it out to his fullback, and that one's dropped. Not a very good pass anyway, and Tim Burrow couldn't handle it. Uh, two plays off the hands of first of all the tight end and secondly the fullback both of them would have been a first down you got to make the plays either the quarterback's a little off or the receiver just running away from the football not a good day for Oklahoma State scored on their first possession and that's and nothing it. the rest of the way fourth down at six and now Barden has to kick from his own end zone Snaps clean, pressure's coming. He line drives one. Davis, whoops, misjudged it, and now has to let it go. So it's going to end up being a great kick with the roll, as Josh Davis made a big play on it. It's kind of like one of those sailing line drives that go over your head. He misjudged it, and it goes all the way down to the 20-yard line. 5:54 remaining in the ball game. Cornhuskers lead by 10. Oscar fans looking on with less than six minutes remaining. Their team has the ball and the lead at the 21 yard line. And Davis banged up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Fields has not done much. Not Touchdown, two interceptions. Lord's doing well on the ground, not throwing the football. The four turnovers OSU has killed him. And Rashawn Woods only 47 receiving yards, and this is a guy that averaged over 130 receiving yards a ball game last year. Bottom line, good defense. Bo Pelini, defensive coordinator, came in here and has done a great job with this uh, defensive unit. Second down 11 for Nebraska. We're down to 5:15, and they're just trying to chew it up in the middle and use clock. Hopefully, get a first down or two. The Cowboys' defense has played well, also. They really have. Bill Clay, the defensive uh, group was. You know, they weren't very good number-wise last year. They gave up a lot of points. Uh, they weren't ranked very highly. But this is a very good defensive uh, outing for the Cowboys here today. So it's a third down situation. The conversions for Nebraska, you see, six out of 15. I don't think they're going to get too fancy on this one, but it's going to be third down and a full 10. They'll work from the shotgun. This is where Jamal Lord has run some quarterback, quarterback draws. Quarterback draw all and over. here it comes again. And I guess Oklahoma State was kind of thinking like Bob and I. Yeah. McGee makes the stop. And they're going to have to give it back. Oklahoma State's certainly not out of it. They should get decent field position out of this because the Nebraska punt, even though they have a great punter, is going to kind of be going into a crosswind. So we'll see if the Cowboys 
can do something with that field position, first they've got to get their hands on it. We got a timeout right now with 424 remaining in the ball game. Kyle Larson, one of the better punters in the country, and it just looks at this point, at least, Bob, like the Cowboys are going to bring some heat here. They're running out of time, and they know it. So they got ten guys at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if they'll try to block the kick. Nebraska adjusting their front. Snaps clean. They got close, but he hung a nice high kick. Lindsay on the other end oh. is hit, and that's a penalty. You've got to let him have a shot at catching it. That's impeding the receiver from taking in the ball. He didn't call a fair catch, but you've got to at least let him get his hands on it. Uh. Remember, the halo rule of last year is gone. That used to be a two yard halo because it was around the punt returner, and boom, you got to at least he let him. Shoved in. He got shoved in by the Oklahoma State player, but that doesn't matter. Watch number four. The Oklahoma State guys kind of block him and kind of shoves him. But that doesn't that doesn't matter. Jarrell Pippins who's the captain of the special teams down there the gunner and he levels Lindsay. The officials having a big meeting about it. And the, the Nebraska coaches are talking about what you're talking about. They're out there halfway to the hash mark. Incognito is looking like he's given the holding sign over to the. Uh... Wait a minute. Maybe they're going to pick this thing up. We're about to get an explanation. We have two penalties that will offset kick catch interference on a kicking team holding on a defensive defensive team. They offset fourth down over. So they have to do it again. They called holding on the kick returning a team that pushed him into the receiver. So we have to do it all again. What you're seeing a lot of uh, Brad since they took away that that halo rule where you, uh, you see nobody's making fair catches anymore. Right. So back we come again. Now the penetration up the middle got within a couple of feet of Kyle Larson. I don't know who it was but they did get a pretty good push right in the middle of things. And let's see if they go after it again. So Larson's going to be in the exact same spot. Oklahoma State this first half had great uh, starting position. Haven't had such good position in the second half. They should get pretty good this time. Williams is the deep man now instead of Lindsay this time. Snaps a little wide but this time they have the return set up as they backpedal and the kick is a mile in the air. Williams will take it at the 33 made one man miss and penalty marker I think we're going to have an illegal block against Oklahoma State again as the flags down at the 35. And Vernon Grant might have been the guilty party on the hit that's going to cause the penalty against the Cowboys and they didn't need that because the field position they would have had right there had there not been a penalty is pretty decent 42 yard line. But there's a call. Number 10 in the red. That wasn't much, but just enough. The matter, you can't impede him if he's in front of you. So now they'll back it up to about the 26 yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Valvoline's Max Life. At 75,000 miles, it's time to switch to Max Life. Miller High Life. To live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is High Life. Horizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. And Shelby, Chevy Silverado. It's the right truck. Right now, Oklahoma State needs the right play. Fields pump fakes from behind. Down he goes. Thomas tracked him down from his defensive end spot. Just never gave up. It's not a sack. There's no gain on the play. It's a defensive end number five. Bernard running sideline to sideline. Last number that number that last year that number was worn by Javon Gross, Gross yep. a cornerback this year by a uh, defensive end 6'4 255 pounds. 
Bernard said, I'm going to take number five. Somebody said, why'd you pick five? He said, that's how many fingers a quarterback's going to see when I lay it upside his head. <laughs> <laughs> Bernard does a lot of talking, can you tell? <laughs> yes. Yeah. College football triple header today on ABC. It wraps up tonight. Most of you are going to see defending national champion Ohio State against Washington. That's in the BCS spotlight game presented by ADT. Some of you are going to see Florida, North Car uh, Florida State and North Carolina in the ACC. It's all coming up tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Check your local listings for the game in your area. So here we've got 345 remaining in what appears to be a game that's going to be a victory for Nebraska. Uh, we still got a little ways to go. Frank Solich looking for win number 50. And, uh, the winningest active coaches by percentage. There's some pretty good guys he's with there. Uh, I'll say. And um, it hasn't been a pretty win today, but it's it's a win. It's a start. Like I said before, they don't they have don't, no preseason games around here. They do have some uh, some easier games uh, down the road. Next. Uh, Next on the agenda, Utah State, then the Penn State is here, then at Southern Miss, Troy State. So they could be, you know, they could win five or six of those. Penn State's going to be an interesting game. We're going to be here in a couple of weeks for that one. Frank, I don't think he's too excited about that trip to Southern Miss, though. Nobody likes going there. That's a Thursday night game. Yeah, on ESPN, you risk your necks when you play those guys. Oh, yeah. Second down nine. Fields been ineffective this second half. He's going to have to start warming up or this one's going to be over. Josh deep middle overshot Woods and it's intercepted. Oh. Nope. Almost. Bland got a hand on it. That one really sailed. Woods was open in the middle of the field. He was. Josh had to slide around in the pocket. He's been knocked down, battered, bruised, scarred. I think he's just a little bit rattled. This Nebraska defense has played well all day. He's thinking about all those other times where yep. he got hit when he was throwing it. This time he was not going to get hit, but he was a little jumpy. We saw Bland had it in his hands, lost it on the way to the turf, and then covered it. Third down. Laying one up, and this one is intercepted. Picked off way back at the 38-yard line. Josh Bullocks has got him the second one of the day. Good game for Josh. Good game for Josh. Josh got a brother on the team, looks just like him. I, I guess. <laughs> His twin brother Daniel also plays safety. Plays a lot. There he is. There right he is right there. There's 14 and 20 together. Yes, sir. They're there exactly go, the same size. And they say that Josh is a little more of the finesse player. And the other one, Daniel, try to smash you in the mouth a little bit. Now he just floats one out. All the way over from the middle of the field. That's that's too easy there and Woods had already broken a pattern to the inside the pass went to the outside and Nebraska takes over and on the ground is Josh Davis Josh has five more and Josh is starting to work his way up that rushing ladder 85 yards for Davis on the day there you go five turnovers that's that's a compliment to the Nebraska defense and Bo Pelini, and uh, that, that's probably going to be as many as Oklahoma State has turned over uh, in, a, in a year and a half. Yeah. So the clock winds its way under three minutes. Jamal Lord using all of that play clock, too, and now Davies, the fullback, banging his way forward, and it looks like he's got a first down. He crossed the yellow line, or it appeared so. Antonio Smith made the stop. Nebraska probably won't have to put the ball in the air again if they can keep grinding it out like this. There you go, Bo. Smile now. Smile. <laughs> Bo doesn't smile much. The media guy, he doesn't smile. We were talking to him the other day, kidding him. Swanee had a good question for him. Swanee. Well, yeah, I, I sat there and I looked at the picture and I said, well, well, well Bo, you you're not smiling in the picture and you're not smiling in, in the family picture he goes are you happy <laughs> are you happy about being here Lincoln he smiles I, I smile all the time I'm a very happy guy he says I like being here yeah five turnovers his defense got only 57 yards for Oklahoma State's offense in the second half Davies again the fullback got a couple and Pinson made the stop there was so much made about the fact that 
Bo did not give out black shirts to the starting defensive players for Nebraska. And many times that's done in spring practice, and that dates back to the Bob Devaney days, too. And he knows what an important tradition it is at Nebraska. He says, I wasn't trying to tick anybody off. I was just trying to get my job done, get this new defense installed. I wasn't worried about all of that. Yeah. Finally, he relented. He gave in, and Wednesday yeah. he gave out yeah. the starting 11 black shirts. And he says, that doesn't make them any better than the rest of the guys, because you might not be a black shirt Monday, that's right. and somebody else might be. So he's got a little different That's take That's been a on tradition it. around here for a long time, and he's only been here for three or four or five months. Nebraska's, Nebraska's upcoming schedule, the yellow are at home games, so four of their first five are at home. They go to Missouri, which will be a, a pretty good team this year. You have to go to Texas and Colorado. But the important thing is there's no Oklahoma on that list. They don't have to play Oklahoma this year. Yep. Oklahoma, most people's number one choice. Oklahoma State, here's what they've got upcoming, Good. starting with Wyoming next week. Wyoming and Southwest Missouri State. So they could win. They could win. They could win all the next four games and then have Kansas State coming to their place. Their fans have been so excited. They were really looking at that date against Kansas State and hoping that if they could pull the upset today that they'd be undefeated going against Kansas State. But that apparently is not going to be the case and for the third straight year. And while he's done a great job, Les Miles is not going to win his opener, it doesn't appear. He's 0-2 in openers. And it looks like another one's about ready to fall by the wayside. Last year they lost to Louisiana Tech 39 36. They blew an 18 point lead in that ball game. Today they had a lead for really pretty far into the third quarter. And then the Nebraska defense took over. Done a great job though turning this program around. No Les. doubt. We talked to him about the expectations have been raised so much. And he said, well, you know what? We want to raise the level and make success a routine and expand those expectations. He's not afraid of that. He's got a contract, the new contract extension. Yep. He's there in Stillwater, likes it there. They have a family atmosphere with their coaching staff. They got a good football team, but today they just uh, met a team that's got. Yeah, this, they, they can go on from here. Yeah. I mean, this doesn't mean that you're going to have a bad season or a losing season. They can go on from here. 69 seconds all that separates Nebraska from opening with a victory at home. Our Chevrolet players of the game with a minute to go. Albert Craig did a great job in that secondary of Oklahoma State did all he could. Josh Bullock's had two interceptions for Nebraska could have gone to a couple other Nebraska guys including Mr. Rude, who had the fumble return that really turned the ball game around. In recognition of their efforts though Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And now Nebraska knows and there's the Bullocks brothers. Do they don't they look a little bit like don't they? I'd say <laughs> they do. If you didn't know which had which tattoo you'd never be able to tell them apart. It's going to be a happy bunch of Cornhuskers. They wanted to erase the memory and remove the taste in their mouth of the seven and seven season of last year including a loss in their bowl game to Ole Miss and they're 17 seconds away from doing just that. So Frank Solich is going to win his 50th ball game as the head coach of the Huskers and it's coming right now. 17 to 7 and the faithful the sellout crowd of 78,000 plus now can exhale in relief because there was a scare thrown in this group. But in the last 15 years Nebraska now is 96 and 5 at home. And they beat Oklahoma State today, ranked number 24 in the country. 17 to 7 is the final. Les Miles and Frank Solich, a lot of mutual respect between those two gentlemen. And Oklahoma starts. Uh, Oklahoma State starts 0 and 1. Nebraska starts 1 and 0. And Swanee's with the winning coach. Well, coach, somewhere somewhere down the line, you're going to think back in this ball game as being your 50th win, and it's going to have a little impact. But with all the conversation about change in the Nebraska program, how do you assess this this win a conference? It, it was a big win for us. <laughs> I thought our staff did a great job preparing uh, this football team in a very short period of time uh, that they've been together to play against an excellent football team, a very explosive football team. 
Well, I'm very proud of the staff, very proud of our players for the way they responded. You told me coming back at the start of the second half that you felt your team wasn't playing up to its potential. What did you tell them at halftime? Well, we, we, we hurt ourselves offensively. We were driving the ball, and then we penalties killed ourselves. We had to play smart football the second half. We were playing physical enough football to win the game. We just weren't playing smart football. And then special teams hurt us in the first half. You can't have defense uh, hold you up the whole game without you doing your share offensively and special teams. We had to get it going. Well, first game, it's a win. We know you're going to get better. We'll see you in a couple Thanks weeks. Thanks a lot, Lynn. Appreciate Thank it. you, okay. Coach. And in a couple weeks, it'll be Penn State in here. And at that time, Nebraska is expecting that they will be 2-0. We know one thing, they're 1-0. Final score, 17-7. For Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan and our crew, Brad Nessler saying so long from Lincoln, Nebraska. Now let's join John Saunders. Square Stadium in New York. John.